take full responsibility for making Marilyn on the other end have to dance around while my dumb ass is, uh, simply had to log in to get this thing to work. But thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking around. And we have a very special guest tonight. I don't know how many of you have or had not heard her story before. One in the chat, if you're familiar with it. Two, if you're not. But we're going to relax and take our time. This is part one of what will be at least two parts, maybe three, depending on how far we get. But as always, my friends, this stream is interactive. If you have any questions for Marilyn as we go along, we'll pop them up and we'll take some towards the end as well. And then also, since this is a really intense story, we'd like to make it a bit of a, um, a party game, so to speak. So as usual, if you put in the word Xenu in your comment and or question and we flash it up, and Marlene, which is the evil cult leader that Marilyn will be talking about, probably in part two, if we throw it up, we take a hit of our favorite poison, mine being this, and Marilyn, what is yours? Uh, I just have some uh, light beer because I don't want to get uh, light white beer, girl eh? wasted, <laughs> but I, okay. but I do. I think I do need. I do need something. So no, fair and, enough. Uh, my hubby say, said I can have a cigarette tonight too. So oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Normally, she's not allowed to smoke in the house. And by the way, we know that's vodka, Marilyn, but I'll play along and pretend <laughs> okay. that's light beer. Okay. I don't know. I might get I might get copyright strike, but it's that. <laughs> Fair enough. And I don't know if you're already um we're gonna lean into this. We're not gonna get totally blasted, but Mandy just can't help herself. So let's go ahead and get started, Marilyn, shall we? The rest Absolutely. of the, the group. Let's get a nice buzz going as we settle into what is it gonna be a, an amazing and um hopefully we're not gonna cry, right, Marilyn? I'm, I'm gonna, gonna try not cry. to, but you know, my viewers know me, so yeah. I'll you wear your bag. heart on your sleeve, ma'am, which is more you than do fine. too, Doug. You're a softie. No, it's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, yeah. so how about um, Marilyn? For those that don't know you, how about you introduce yourself? Could okay. you give us a quick thirty second or minute overlay of the whole Absolutely. story arc we're going to be talking about, and then we'll take it from okay. when you pop out of the womb. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so my name is Marilyn Honig. I uh, was never in Scientology for some people who have asked many times, uh, but I am a cult survivor of a, I call it a Petri dish religion. It was a combination of a um, charismatic slash uh, fundamental Pentecostal uh, slant, which is what I was, I was raised in from the time I was nine. And, uh, also, uh, very heavily influenced by the IBLP, which is Bill Gothard's, uh, ministry slash cult. That what does IBLP, what does IBLP stand for Marilyn? So IBLP is, um, Institute in basic life principles. If mm -hmm. anyone has seen the shiny, happy people documentary that the Duggars, uh, that they did on the Duggars, it was their, uh, their cult that they, they came really? out of. It was, um, I, you know, we can, we'll totally go into that in part two, definitely. Sure. Um, but, uh, for those who don't know, it was a non-denominational ministry. It wasn't an actual church, but it was very highly. Oh, Michelle. Michelle's here. Um, Hi, Michelle. I love her. I love you, Michelle. Uh, yeah. So it, it was, um, my husband calls it the smart bomb of Christianity of Pentecostalism because they did these big seminars. They taught these principles about uh, authoritarianism and even in public schools um, in the Bible Belt. And it was like basically uh, a, they talked about a umbrella of authority and all of this um, dogmatic, very patriarchal, uh, authoritarian structure. So that was, uh, you know, a combination of the crazy, you know, casting out demons, speaking in tongues. We'll talk. We'll talk about all okay. that tonight. I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's funny that w it's amazing that all these cults, these destructive cults, and even religions, right, Marilyn? They all seem to have a demon part. You know, ours is reserved yeah. until we get to OT3 and beyond. And we Body were literally pain. exercising yeah. demons. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's wild. Yeah. I know. It's all it's all about demons. By the way, do you believe in demons uh, post-cult or do you, um, did that kind of go away? I was just curious right out of the gate. I don't know. I kind of just put everything aside and I'm just taking back little bits and pieces. Nice. I think there's something out there. But uh, what I do know is that I don't know, you know. That's exactly <laughs> and, uh, what I say. And I kind of feel, yeah, maybe that makes us agnostic, but I kind of feel like, um, I don't want to skip over this life worried about the next one. If there is exactly. one, right. It's exactly. like, we've got, we've got friends and family and puppies and 
whatever. Oh, you're, you're getting a puppy. I'm just telling you right now. I live vicariously through yours. Speaking of puppies, <laughs> he's not around. You can't, you can't show the three-year-old little baby. I will later. I'll, I'll go grab okay. one of them later. <laughs> Guys, stick around because he is a super cutie. He's got these tan little paws and she just showed him to me. He's like a little wolf dog and he's only three months old. So we'll show him to you uh, as His we, name's as we Rocky and he's got, he's got boxing gloves. He's ready to fight. And we know why you named him Rocky, but that's also a surprise that Marilyn will that's share right. as we yep. get into the exiting part. Yep, absolutely. Do you yeah. mind taking a quick uh, question from Michelle uh, right before we sure, absolutely. get into you literally popping out of the womb and going on this adventure that you were not even slightly prepared for? I mean, who would be? Hey, Michelle, on demons and cults, cults require an enemy. Exactly. Us versus them, right? Yep. And they mm -hmm. work best when the enemy might be inside anyone the leaders want. That so true. Man. Is I never thought of that. Bingo. That is absolutely 100% true. Michelle, um, that is if good. You get, yeah. If they get you doubting yourself, doubting your own thoughts, navel gazing, you know, like looking within constantly and, and just you go crazy. And we'll talk about that too, because people sure. did go crazy in my call. Um, oh, I shouldn't say go crazy. They had men mental illness. You know, they had mental They were breakdown. driven crazy though. They were and driven. And I would have, I would have had a mental breakdown if not for crochet, I think, because it kind of kept me in my body, you know? Yeah. And, and if Marlene, I'm just saying Marlene, if she knew how much I liked to crochet and she thought I was just being a servant, you know, making blankets and stuff, utilitarian things, if she knew how much I depended on it and how much of a comfort it was, uh, she would have taken it away. So it's a little fuck early Marlene. in the stream to say F you, Marlene, but hey, F fuck you, Marlene. Marlene, fuck Xenu. And I mean, we have a party crowd, it looks like in here. We made a mate for an hour. I see you guys are trying to get us trash before we get to the end of stream. So be it. No, I told Aaron, I, Aaron, why the fuck did that pop up? Cause you guys were, were talking about Aaron earlier. I told Marilyn that I can, <laughs> I can smoke an ounce and still be coherent. So don't worry about me, but you young oh, I, lady, I'm Irish and I, and my body mass. Yeah. I, I light beer is okay. just, you know, merely a flesh wound here. Oh, that's so funny, by the way. We'll get into the flesh wound part too. Cause that part cracks me up oh, when you, you like talk that? about the recovery, <laughs> merely a flesh wound. Again, guys, stick around to find out the inside jokes that are already kicking off. Marilyn, do you want to take us from when you popped out of the womb into this mad okay. world? Okay. Wow. I don't think I ever have really told that to anyone. I mean, not anyone, but um, yeah. So uh, my my mother, um, she was from actually born in the town that I'm in in Vermont, right uh, over the border um, from Western Massachusetts. She uh, got married, had, uh, she had adopted an older, uh, a little girl. Um, I didn't know her as a child and it was, uh, well, I guess I won't say her name, but anyways, she adopted mm -hmm. her um, and then didn't think she could have children. She had uh, six more children of her own with her husband. Um, she had in 1970, she had an extramarital affair and found out she was pregnant. And in 1970, that was very, very frowned on. And she was well known in the community. I found out later that she did a lot of charity work, kind of like what I do now. Um, and uh, she was on the uh, different uh, committees to to help people find housing, and which is what I do now. But um, she also um, maybe... I guess wasn't happy in the marriage. She had an affair. She found out she was pregnant. She moved the whole family to uh, North Shore, Boston in Haverhill, which is, you know, north of Boston and uh, was a single mom with seven kids. And I was born in Haverhill, Mass. And uh, my father, my biological father, uh, I'll just say his first name, Bob, he he lived with us back and forth. He was kind of a little bit, I would say, out of it. You know, he had a, a lot of struggles um, with mental illness and and um, alcoholism. And I do remember him as a kid, but he was kind of in and out of our life. But we lived in, you know, various um, houses that my mother was renting. And uh, I believe we were probably on welfare. And I remember uh, some of my earliest memories. I remember being three in a different house that was not the house that the fire happened in when I was five. Um, when I was about three, I remember my mom um, crying on the phone. And uh, my oldest brother, uh, his, we called him Buddy. His name was Herman after his father. He um, had gone into the Navy and he went uh, home on leave to see his father um, in Western Mass. And they uh, found him 
Sorry, I can do this. I can do this. Um, they Good found time, Marilyn. In- it's okay. It's okay. And you can skip over anything you, don't, you feel uncomfortable yeah. talking about. No problem. It's okay. Uh, I don't really remember him, but, it, you know, it's a, it's always, a, you know, tough to talk about these things. Um, yeah, so she was crying because um, they'd found him in the backyard and uh, he had taken his own life. And how, how old was he, Marilyn? He was about, I think he was, he was 19, 19, 19 or 20. This is your yeah. brother? Yeah. Herman. Yeah. So we called sorry, him buddy. Man. I didn't know that part of your story. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't, couldn't tell you. I didn't, want, I didn't get to tell you everything. Um, so, and, and I'm really, I would just want to say right now too, if I giggle or laugh, it's not because I think it's funny. It's because I've developed a really dark sense of humor in a way is like it just helps me cope do you have that at all Doug? yep i was just gonna say that but i didn't okay, want to interrupt you. yes that's exactly where my sar- okay. sardonic sense of humor comes from what you just said okay thank you um and so yeah um i i my memories of my mom she, I remember her being really sweet, like just hugging me all the time. I remember um, her making toast. You know, we have these these little little memories. Um, I remember telling her, telling me, "Don't eat the watermelon seeds because they could make you sick." You know, things like that. And uh, I just remember being her shadow. I'd follow her everywhere, even into the bathroom, and I would ask questions <laughs> about anatomy and stuff. You know, and uh, she was always just very like nice and i just remember being so loving and um that's where you get that from because i was going to ask you right out of the gate marilyn if you've always been this way with kind of this bright shiny positive personality um have you always kind of been like that you think you got that from your mom i think it's always been in there but um when you i don't know i guess um yeah I've always, your personality is your personality right whether it's suppressed or not so i went through a lot of shit but yeah i've always been a little bit of a spitfire but it did i did change a lot over the years and then in the past 50 you know i've been out 16 years mm-hmm. and i grew into my to my own who i am again and and it's really funny because my daughter is the same way she's just you know she wasn't a good cult member either at all you, know? you were never kind of designed to be a good cult member as people are going to find out because you were so rebellious like me. So I, I have so many questions already. Like, so how does a rebellious person like you get involved in it? But you were led into it. You didn't really have any choice as we're going to, as we're going to come to understand. Yeah. And, and, you know, but I did have the idealism, you know, I did have mm-hmm. the searching and we'll, yeah, we'll get into that, you know, the whole thing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we could go on, we could do an eight part series. You yeah, know? we probably will. Like I said, <laughs> friends, we're not going to get through the whole story. Uh, we'll end off, you know, um, whenever it feels right. But so we're, cause there's so much, I already have a million questions that I want to ask you, but we're going to be jumping ahead in the story. So right out of the womb, you're already, you had to deal with uh, the trauma of your brother. How old were, do you mind if I ask how old you were, Marilyn, when that happened? I was, I was three. I don't, three? I only remember my mom crying. I don't remember buddy. Really? I don't have memories of him. No, no memories um, at all. I mean, his face or anything. I know what he looks like. Cause I've seen pictures. So I do remember a picture of him, his military pictures, Navy picture on a, on a, you know, a shelf or something. So I knew who he was, but I don't remember any interaction or conversation with him or anything like that. Do you mind if I ask you, did the, what the contribution was to his suicide? Was it the military? Did he have PTSD when he came back from the military or was something else going on? Um, it was, uh, it was thought that he was gay mm-hmm. and, um, that he was, um, having a hard time with it and not, um, being accepted. And this was in 1970 when it was, when it was a, a total no, no. So yeah. that's what many of uh, my, you know, uh, cousins and even his, his own father, you know, thought so. I'm sorry, man. That, yeah. that, that, oh my God, that sucks. Does the story get any happier as we progress, Marilyn? I, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No. Let's, well, well, let's just get through this part and then we can, sure, we sure. can talk about the crazy, uh, we can talk about the crazy faith healer. Cause that's fun. 
people That's really want to hear the word Marlene soon too. So guys, it, it, it does. Well, she's, she's seriously a survivor. I've actually never heard a story like, like this before. It briefly reminds me a little bit, Marilyn, of uh, Kelly Copter's upbringing where she pops out of the womb and she was labeled a demon at age six and didn't have any chance. And that's just something she had to work yeah. herself out of like you did. Okay. Thank, I'm sorry. to I didn't know that about, about your brother. I'm really sorry to hear that when you, um, so you're three years old and then what happens? Yeah. Okay. So, um, then we, we, uh, moved to another house, uh, a place called high street. And, um, I, I think I went to kindergarten. Yeah, I was so five, I was five and a half. So yeah, I went to kindergarten early when I was four turning five and, um, we were just living in the house with all my older siblings. My, uh, sister Jamie was nine at the time when I was, so I was, so I'm jumping to when I was five. Mm -hmm. Um, my sister, I had two sisters, uh, Sherry and, and Jamie. Sherry was older than me, way older. She was like 16, 17. Um, but I was very attached to her. She was like my second mom. And um, we shared a bedroom. And I remember we had, yep, yeah, that's me when I was five. There, <laughs> look at how cute she is, Marilyn. <laughs> see, you can even see the brightness in you. I mean, I guess kids are bright anyways, but you can see the shiny, happy person. I that's love the ocean. To use. That's the Duggar chip. Oh, yeah. Uh, shiny, happy I'm people. Sorry. I know. <laughs> but okay. seriously, you look all bright and uh, you look. Base, the same personality, man, right there. You can see it all. Oh, how old are <laughs> you, love, by the way? I was five, I think, That's there. Right. Yeah. I love the beach. I still do. Still love Me too. the beach. Me too. But um, so um, my... I guess I should give a little a little bit of background. I don't want to get totally into the weeds about um, the lead up to the fire and why the fire happened, how the fire happened. I mean, there's no reason why. There's never. I mean, this is just it was horrible. And um, I'll just tell you, it was uh, deliberately set, which was fucking, um, yeah. Um, but uh, when um, my mom was uh preparing to move us um she was getting threats from the landlord mm -hmm. and um she hired a lawyer because the threats were getting really really bad she owed him three hundred dollars and even in 1970 three hundred dollars isn't a fortune but she owed him three hundred dollars and uh he was threatening to uh, burn the house down and the landlord Marilyn. the landlord was threatening to burn the house down yes to burn his own house down yes was he insane? Yeah, well, was because he... there was a, there was a ring of arson. There was an arson ring um, that people were burning their own fucking houses down to get insurance money. Wow, that was actually and, a thing. Eh? Yeah, and she was getting all kinds of threatening calls. She had witnesses. You know, they didn't have like recording. Like you couldn't like Reese does. You can't really record him back then. But she kept a journal, and she um, got a lawyer and uh, gave him the journal and said. If anything happens to me, save this journal. Sorry. It's save okay, this Marilyn. journal. Hold on to it. Um, so uh, in uh, May 19th, 1976, um, I woke up in the middle of the night. Uh, I just remember, I guess in the newspaper, it says I was screaming outside that I'd been rescued outside um the, the fire when it happened but i just remember um being held by this woman in her terry cloth bathroom i just remember the bathroom and i remember looking at her face and hearing all the the sights and the sounds and the smells and just being scared to death and i looked up at her face and she just had terror on her face and i was hearing all kinds of noises and and sirens and everything um and I knew from the smell that it was a fire, um, it, but it was just so, so chaotic and crazy. And I didn't see anybody I recognized. Um, they, she was trying to get me to not look back, you know. And um, then I had two police officers take me, put me in the back of a cruiser. And, um, okay, I'm going to laugh and I'm going to drink. And here's to Zenu. Fair enough. Let's throw it. Anybody throwing in a uh, Zenu or Marlene to help us out here? Come on, guys. You got to be on the ball. Are you going to make me type it out? Okay. Stand by, Marilyn. 
I'd get that drunk by the end of the stream yet. All right. Guys, what she's referring to real quick, by the way, maybe to make it easier, Marilyn, just so you don't have to beat a dead horse here and we could, you know, get through it and move on. Okay. Just wanted to show people that, um, so she was involved in a fire. Can I ask you, Marilyn, that the gal that you're talking about, whose arms you were in, she was what? She wasn't a firefighter. She was there. Who was she? She was a neighbor. Actually, one of the clippings I gave you, mm -hmm. uh, I must have run up to her because I said they're upstairs. There it is. So it says six dead, six injured, several rescued in fire believed set. <sighs> Who, Marilyn, who was in the house? Were they who were the uh, who were the twelve people? Okay, so um, sorry. Uh, okay, okay, so it was so it was me. If I ask you anything that you don't want to answer, just say I don't want to answer that, and yeah. everybody understands. I because I don't want to accidentally ask you something that. No, I I will answer it. I just try not to cry. So guys, if I cry, I'm sorry, but I'm That's I'm going to okay. answer. You got a good you got a good crew here. Yeah. Um, if, if I, I probably will skip over a lot of my five to nine sure. age years and that's my wolf, my wolf child, lost child years, but I, I can talk about the fire, but yeah, I will only say what I feel like I can say. Okay. Um, yeah. So no, I think it's important to know. So, um, I'll start with, um, people that were rescued that survived was myself. Um, my father was there that night. Um, my aunt Shirley was there. My um, my older brother David, um, he was next in line from Buddy, and then Sherry, my sister, was was babysitting. She wasn't there that night, so she she didn't have any injuries or or anything. And um, there was uh, David's uh, uh, girlfriend, Karen, and then there was a little baby, a one year old baby, uh, Melissa. And then um, who perished in the fire was my my mother, Rose. And I'm going to say her name because um, it's important later on. Her name's important later on. Um, and my sister, Jamie, who was nine, she had a friend sleeping over. Her name was Donna. And if it would have been any other night, they were sleeping in the room that I shared with Sherry. So if it was any other night, that Sherry uh, hadn't been babysitting, it, it would have been me and Sherry in that room. And um, then I had uh, Shir Shirley's, <clears throat> sorry, Shirley's son. Uh, Ray, we called him Ray Ray. His name was Raymond. Uh, my brother, my brother Michael. He was twelve. And sorry, and my, my brother um, Twinkie. We called him Twinkie. Because he had blonde hair and he looked like a Twinkie. <laughs> he was skinny and he just looked like a Twinkie. Um, his name his name was was um, Perry. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so they they perished and um, yeah. If you want to, I'm you can so read that. sorry, Marilyn. I didn't know this. I'm. I hope that was okay to ask. I just yeah, I that's didn't okay. Know. So there were twelve. Um, and when I, um, I told you, I started to tell you about the fire, the, um, the police cruiser. So they put me in there, um, and brought me to the hospital and uh, where I stayed, I only needed to stay there a week, but I ended up staying for over probably six weeks to two months because they, okay. If you stay, keep on that, it says mm -hmm. Marilyn Briggs five remains a patient at the hospital while officials try to determine where she will live. So I only needed to stay for about a week. I had, I did have third degree burns on my hands, second degree on my face. Um, you know, keep in mind I was only five. So thank goodness my wow. face is, uh, my fa I have a big face and it's growing a lot. So if you, without you have the a beautiful makeup, face can, too. Thank you. You, you really can do. see, you can see the scars without my makeup, but, um, I was very fortunate and my, you know, my hands are still deeply scarred, but, um, it, it says suffered. She oh, suffered burns. Yeah, I don't know what that. Inhalation. I don't know oh. what that blocked out. You know, all these. There was so much ink, like splattered everywhere on these. Some of these old things, burns and smoke inhalation. Yeah. A next this door neighbor, neighbor. Yep. Mrs. Pauline. Apologies if I mispronounce this. Paga Gophilus. Am I pronouncing mm -hmm. that right? 
I have no idea. I okay. don't know. I've never. Well, I guess I met her that night, but I, I haven't met that her. That was the gal that was holding still you? still alive. I do want to see if Hannity's and Combs and Como, Hannity's and Combs, Hannity, what is it? I forgot their name. Hannity's and Como. Oh, yeah. The firefighters. The firefighters. Yeah. I'll read that um, out. But, but this is, was this the woman that was holding you that night? Marilyn? I think it was. It might have been. I'm not sure. Well, it says she was awakened by a puff and heard a young girl screaming. She said she ran from her home. <laughs> that was me. Uh, she said she ran from her home and saw that the girl had escaped from the burning building and you're screaming, they're upstairs, they're upstairs. Do you even remember, Marilyn, like anything before that or did, did your memory just kind of take hold when she's holding you? I don't remember screaming. I just remember wow. being outside and her holding me. But it had to be me. I was the only girl that escaped. I was the only. You were I was the, the only, only child. one. What? You were the only child that escaped. Were there, and there was other. Yeah, except for the baby was. Um, sorry, okay. the baby was on the second floor, and they, the mother jumped. Karen jumped off the roof with her. The back. Oh my god! So I was the only child. Yeah. Sorry. Um, five. Yeah, five children died. <sighs> All um, right. How about that scene of shit? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Guys, we might um we might end up on our asses tonight. I don't think <laughs> no. that's a bad idea. I didn't know this part of the story. Um, Marilyn. I'm so sorry, ma'am. It's okay. Quick it's, been 40, break. it's been forty seven years. It's okay. It's been forty Yeah, but I imagine that that doesn't go away. You're, you know, no, it doesn't. It's a permanent it scar. Doesn't. Um and I and I don't want I don't want people feeling bad for me because like I, I just I'm telling it because if it can help somebody else relate, because we all have a story, you know, we all have things that um, are hard to talk about. And mm -hmm. um, if um, I would say if a middle-aged crochet lady from the holler can, can come out here and talk about it, then anybody can. You've been you know? such a blessing to have in this community, Marilyn. I mean, I didn't know who you were, you know, you said that you watch Leah Remini and that's what kind of got you to relate as we get later yeah. into the story that you were in a totally. cult, but you've been a fucking blessing to have in this community. Everybody yeah. loves you, man. And they, I really, a lot of people have already had healing just by the channel, the croqueting and all the wonderful work you, you do. And this is the community where we, uh, I mean, I don't know if any of us has have, had as bad as you, Marilyn, especially starting out out of the womb, but, um, it is a community of, uh, trauma survivors, so to speak. Yeah. So there's no, yeah, you, there's Sarah. no comparison. It's just, yeah. I mean, is that that's sometimes why I don't want to tell my story and 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 but because you I don't feel want like, people to feel sorry for you and compare yeah, and, and, I, all that and stuff. I don't want them to think I'm lying either you know because it's so fucking crazy. <laughs> I've Thank only known you, one man. asshole that ever said that you're lying. I'm what, nobody's doubted your story, right? No, other than, nobody. Other than what's his name? Do you have a glass there, young lady, that you'd like to show? It's Guys, just a parody. Can you? Can you <laughs> who, Everybody, who made pay that? Pay no attention. Pay no attention. It's just who a parody. Who made that? Kelly Copter made Kelly it. Kelly made that. Me. That's so good. <laughs> One in the chat if you know who that asshole is. Two if you don't. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't know Kelly yeah. made a freaking. Yeah, and you know, it's it's really funny <laughs> that um, you know, he was doubting it and all that or not doubting it basically saying i'm a liar he was um, a fucking dickhead Marilyn, and he <laughs> what he wrote in the comment section was inappropriate the and any, just, yeah anybody who tried to defend me he's like i wish you were in the house too but the house that doesn't exist you know but yeah yeah like, whatever Pro dude prove like, it show photos that guy has no so funny. class yeah i mean i don't know i like i don't buy into the whole everybody's osa thing like i don't i mean i who know who fucking knows if he's i, I know he's not osa because he's not really smart enough to be but like if he's being paid by somebody who's being somebody who's, it's like it doesn't matter but like if he is trying to find my button or my ruin guess what i've already been ruined and i've and i've risen up from the ashes and here i am and you know what i'm you know i'm making fucking like at least seven videos a week half the time i'm gonna make seven more next week he's not gonna hurt he's not, He's not going to stop me. So just, this, you know. Kimberly would like to see the mug a little bit closer if you don't mind. I Actually, Kimberly, I'll take my ass out of this so you can get a full picture of Marilyn. Oh, it's like, you know. all right. So we got that. And we got another side because Kelly's very thorough. Thorough. It says, it ain't no joke. Coffee. <laughs> 
that's no so joke. funny and by the way um it's everything's backwards but i think you guys know who we're talking about he would be thrilled to know that we wasted five minutes on him but <laughs> yes tony, five minutes of fame. tony this next one is for you just for um bringing us all together even closer and yes. attempting to add trauma to the community but achieving the opposite I'm, we're not going to make it through this stream, Marilyn. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Fucking A. Tony, this one's for you. And- <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking about the tomato? Oh, yeah. His lesson rhymes with tomato, but yes. you say tomato, I say tomato. Tomato. <laughs> tomato. 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 Hey. If you guys don't know who we're talking about, don't fucking worry about it, man. We'll, we'll deal <laughs> yeah. with it at the end, all right? Denver, Steve, what's going down? We're talking about the fucking tomato. You got a problem with that, Denver? <laughs> <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we need to lighten it up a little bit, man, because this yeah. is this is heavy already. Yeah. Okay, Marilyn, can I read out the firefighter yes. statement if you don't mind? Because it's yes. it just encapsulates what we're talking about. It's yeah, it was an excerpt from a heartbreaking. book. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. What was the name of the book, by the way? Well, it says it right it's here. It's called uh, Yeah. I wish I had a picture of the cover. So this is written in 2013 by would, a fighter. Would, fighter. Mm-hmm. Well, the cover, the cover, I don't have a picture of, uh, you know, I do have a picture of it because I have the book, but mm-hmm. the, the picture, the, the cover of the chapter is what you showed where it says the day the hero cried. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where it says six, six were. Yeah. This one right here. That that's is this cover. actually the cover of the book? No, this is the newspaper the- article, but you're saying that's what went on the cover. That's the, that's the, there were like uh cover pages of each chapter and that's the chapter, the I day see. the heroes cried. That was my fire. I call uh, it my fire. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. They actually have pictures of it here of them scaling up on the second floor. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So here's what the firefighter um, had to say in that book, which gave me a hell of a lot more respect for firefighters if I didn't already have it. So this is an excerpt mm-hmm. from 32 years on a hometown. So this guy spent 32 years as a hometown fire department. The day the heroes cried. This is May 19th, 1976. Haven Hill, Massachusetts. <clears throat> a little piece of each firefighter died that night of sorrow within themselves. One of the worst feelings a firefighter can feel is the loss of a brother firefighter in the line of duty and children losing their lives in a fire. It leaves a scar of sadness that they'll never forget. There were some heroic saves that night and also six tragic losses. The firefighters gave their best efforts to try and save lives that night. Lieutenant, I knew I was going to mispronounce this, Marilyn. I even asked you beforehand. I think it's I think it's Hannity's and Hannity's, Como. Hannity's. Yeah. Hannity's. So Lieutenant Hannity's and Larry Como did everything they could to try and reach those children. The fire had too much headway, along with the obstacles that were placed in their way, obstructing them. After the fire was out and it was time to renew. I'm so sorry you lost your mom, Marilyn. That f- I'm so sorry. Um, I can't even imagine what that would be like. Oh, my God. And the fire was a- <clears throat> after the fire was out and it was time to remove the mother and five children from the building. All the firefighters and those who assisted in removing the children were glassy eyed from the tears. This was the day the heroes cried. And that's just one excerpt from the three chapters that Marilyn sent over. But if I read all of them, we'd all be in tears. But wow. Are you're not in contact with any of those firefighters or anything anymore? Are you? You probably uh, barely barely knew them. A few years ago, uh, when I found out about the book. Uh, it was written in 2013. Mm-hmm. I didn't find out about it until maybe 2018, 2019. Um, I, really? yeah, I, there's a firefighters museum, which I'm actually planning on going in the spring. I have a plan with the, uh, and I'll, I'll mention that uh, in a minute about, about my connection there, but I talked to Lieutenant Ralph Brown who wrote the book mm-hmm. and um, he's in his eighties now. He wrote, he, he wrote, um, a memoir about all of all of the different fires that he had fought in his brothers and you know his brother firefighters and had tons of pictures in the book and there's a firefighters museum that he um founded i guess and kept all those archives in the museum and he was selling the books i bought like four copies i gave them to 
you know, different people who really wanted him. And uh, I talked to him on the phone and he said he always wondered what happened to me. And he um, kept saying, um, I'm sorry, we, we tried, you know, and I said, I know you did. And thank you because I'm alive, you know, yeah. and, and um, I was glad I was able to thank him because then I'm not sure if he's alive anymore, but um, I, I am in touch with uh, the mayor of Haverhill, who, if you remember, I, I told you that uh, my mom had hired a lawyer when she was getting threats. And that lawyer is now the mayor of Haverhill. And the way I found that out was um, in 2021. So it was only um, two years ago. I just decided I would put a um, random post on the Haverhill. There's called Haverhill 411, which is like, you know, like a citywide chat thing where people, you know, they complain about what, you know what I mean? They just talk yeah. like a, a, a community chat. And I said, hi, I don't know if anybody remembers me uh, or my or my family, but I just said we had a fire. It was like so many people were commenting. Oh, my God. I was friends with Donna. Oh, my God. I was friends with your sister. I was friends with, you know, and then the mayor said, hi, Marilyn, I'm the mayor. Can you please? I knew your mother. Can you please send me a message? So I messaged him. He friended me and he told me the story. And it was it is like a true crime story. Um the landlord was framed really? and uh, yes, um, there was a, um, well, he was threatening. So they thought it was him. There was mm -hmm. a grand jury that was convened and um, he was pretty much ready to be sent off. You know, really? He was trial. framed that well, eh? They definitely thought it was him and it wasn't. Yeah. No. Wow. Um, it turned out to be, um, if you remember my, my cousin Ray Ray that passed away in the fire. It was his mother, my aunt Shirley. Do you mind if I ask why she did that? She claimed that she was um, just trying to help um, basically to, I don't know exactly, except that it was like trying to blame it on the landlord so that, um, I don't fucking know. Marilyn, I, this is your that. aunt? This is your aunt? It was my so, mother's half-sister. Yeah. So was and, she trying to kill everybody? Did no. Did she know you were in the house? You didn't know no, you were in the house or she, what? No. She she said she was trying to start a little fire just to get the landlord in trouble. And it was a drafty night. Um, they had, in the 1970s, they had what's called gasoline paneling. The paneling in the hallway was um, highly flammable. And she used... Um, if you read the chapter that I sent you, the three three pages, yeah, um, lighter fluid uh, was used as an incendiary. So it went up within minutes. The fire station was literally at the bottom of the hill, and they couldn't get to it fast enough. It was fully engulfed within minutes. She never, I mean, she never planned on killing her own son, her own sister. What did she think would happen, though? That's so I don't stupid. No. It's, it was insane. And then and, she tried um, to frame it rather than take responsibility for it. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So uh, investigation, you know, it's like it was, it was all, you know, everybody was investigating it. And um, when she was found to have done it, um, I remember, I don't have a copy of that. I'd probably have to go and find the microfilm at the library if they still have it. But I lost the copy of her being hauled away in handcuffs weeks if not months later and um it says front page a uh, woman charged with six counts of murder and uh she ended up pleading temporary insanity and um only got six months in um i think it was belchertown i do know and that part guys did you hear what she said she you know what she did and she pled insanity and apparently um, rather than spending life in prison, she was out in six fucking months. Unbelievable. How is that even possible, Marilyn? I mean, did, I don't know, but she... I never, she tried to reach out to me when I was in the foster home and I wouldn't, I wouldn't she ever see her again. Fuck herself. Yeah. Yeah. And I was a little, I was just like 10 or 11. Oh and I was just like, God I never want to see her again. I never want to see her again. And I never did. She went to her grave and I never saw her again. I couldn't. There's how could no, she even no, live with herself doing that? What? I, can't even, I don't even know how she could live with herself doing that 
or why she'd even dare to reach out to you. Yeah. So she just went about living the rest of her life, six months. Was she uh, suddenly uncrazy uh, at a certain point? I have no idea because I didn't want to, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I didn't want to listen. Yeah. I didn't care. If anyone mentioned her name, I, I just, I'd never want to hear about her again. Insanity was hard to disprove. But even, yeah, you, yeah. you don't have any, you don't remember if she was insane or not. You didn't ascertain her state of mind at that time at all, Marilyn, to get any feel for if she's bullshitting or not. I was just curious. No. Oh my God. I vaguely remember her, but I, I never saw her again. I couldn't dog, you know, understandably. So yeah. I would, I would, I didn't want even to want to her. know that she still was breathing, yeah. honestly, you know? Yeah. So, um, okay. When so, I was, we got through that hard part, right, Marilyn? I mean, yes. we can finally get to the freaky ass, like, okay. semi-culty yeah, so shit. Get, so I'll give you a little bit of uh, just kind of a lead up to the context of the foster home. Um, so I was, like I said, I was in the hospital uh, for longer than I needed to be. And uh, when I was finally released, I uh, just kind of like... Of course, my my father wasn't on my birth certificate. My mother's husband, estranged husband was, who I didn't know. And uh, he didn't want me. <laughs> and I didn't want, I didn't know him. So whatever. Um, I had no, no guardian. And so I just kind of lived wherever. Um, suffered a lot of abuse, pretty much everything you can imagine. Marilyn, um, your mom was out of the picture house though? Oh, I'm sorry. My mom died. I'm sorry. I just realized that as I said it. I'm so sorry. You, you don't have a mom. Your dad, uh, you didn't really know him kind of anyways, which I didn't quite get the dad part. Yeah. So on my birth certificate was my mother's estranged husband and okay. I didn't know him, Herman. And okay. so he lived in Western Mass. I was still in, in Haverhill. And your mom um, was up... raising you by herself. Hence, he was estranged. So you didn't know him and you didn't have him to go back to. Did you try to reach well, out to him or? He was not my real father. He was on my I birth see. certificate, but I didn't know him. He wasn't, he hated, not hated me, but I was, you know, I was an affair baby, right? I wasn't his. I so, see. um, and all of his kids had passed away except for David and Sherry, my older sister and my older brother, who, uh, David's the only one that's still alive besides me out of the seven. And, uh, Sherry and David were, they were too old for like foster care or anything. They just ran away and fended for themselves. So, uh, I, my real father, my whatever biological father became a raging alcoholic. I tried living with him for a while super abusive, different real, I was living with different relatives. Um, Sherry tried to, to take me in, but she had, she was homeless too. So that was rough. Um, yeah. So I was just couch hopping with whoever I could live with. At and, five um, years old. Five My to dad. eight and a half. Yeah. So I lived with, you know, different people. Um, yeah. Suffered a lot of abuse. I did have a bright spot is that, um, at one of the houses I lived in, I think it was, uh, I had like, I think four different second grades. Um, the school was very, you know, sporadic too. Um, but I was in different second grades, but I remember, I think it was first or second grade. Somebody hooked me up with a uh, big sister, big brother association. And there was this wick, wicked, nice lady. I say wicked, nice. Cause I'm from Boston originally. Um, but nice. she, her name was Christine and, uh, she used to take me out on Saturdays and, uh, her, her parents had like an in-ground pool and she was, I loved her, loved her so much. And, um, I lost touch with her when I was moved to back to Western mass. So I never saw her again until I was uh, about late thirties, early forties, about 15 years ago, she found me. <laughs> Um, after all these years and she said she had wanted to adopt me, but she couldn't find me. So, um, wow. she's wow. in her seventies now. I've seen her a few times. I talked to her, uh, she lives in New Hampshire and, uh, just lovely. Like, it, yeah. So that was a bright spot, um, that somebody cared, you know, and I never forgot that. And uh, when did you find that out, Marilyn, that she cared and that she wanted to adopt you? Did you I was like 40. It was a little late to adopt me. Can you imagine how different, do you ever think about how different your life would have been if she yes, had adopted you? I do. But then, but then, you know, I've got 
three beautiful children and I, you know, they're in the twenties now. They're so beautiful. And my husband and all, all of you, yeah. like I wouldn't yeah, yeah. have any of this. Yeah. So yeah, it's like bittersweet. When you try to go back and erase everything. You you're going to erase everything that was good too. That's a great viewpoint because I've often wondered about that. That's really well said because you could of course see, oh yeah, I would have not gone through the very stuff we're going to discuss. You wouldn't be, you know, getting dunked into water and have demons removed from you. And perhaps you would have had a completely different upbringing, but you can't, you, but there's, there's good that goes with that too. And strength and lessons and shit too. And you can't take it back anyways. You can't live right. in the past. Yeah. yeah. Marilyn, do you mind if I ask you a quick question that somebody no, asked? Ahead. So we yeah. can just, cause I feel like if we miss this one and take it up at the end, we're, we're not right. going to get the context. Does this ring a bell at all to you? Hey, Ann, cute little kitty, by the way, Marilyn, have you heard of Mick? Philpot. It's a UK case of fire from 2013. And she says it's really eerily similar to what happened to your family. Does that ring a bell at all? No. Mick okay. Philpot. No. Doesn't ring a bell. Okay. By the way, real, real, real quick, just to throw in the word. Um, let's pretend there's a Xenu in there, Marilyn, because I think we're we're, we're going to need a Cheers. lot this time. Pretend that Xenu and from N again. SPs or Scientology's demons prior S O T three. I never thought of that, but that's a good way of looking at it. Or Scientology's demons. We're not necessarily looked at as demons. There's demon right. exorcism in O T three. In other words, and like in Scientology, we're called thetans, spiritual beings. And then there's also body thetans, which are the demons, the spiritual beings. They're still spiritual beings that you get rid of on O T three. So SP, suppressive persons, those are people who doubt Scientology or try to snap people out of the cult. Um, we're not necessarily the same demons that you would find on the upper levels, but your point is taken. Might as well be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So thank you for that question. We'll cover, yeah. cover some of those later. So at least it lightens up a little bit because you're not joining the cult yet. When you no. finally find a foster <laughs> place to land, you got your trash bag, I believe, where you show up. <laughs> that's you know? right. I was a black trash bag kit. I was. Uh, proud that's of why it. I, I like to I like to donate uh, little you know double bags and backpacks and stuff to to nice. uh, foster kids because I know what that's like. Yeah, just kind of going from pillar to post, and um, yeah. So DCF finally stepped in. <laughs> um, I don't. I think I told you this dog. I don't ever remember um, having a like a social worker, nothing in my really? life. No. Did no you company. have one that you just don't remember or you simply did not have one? As far as you know. As far as I know, no. no. Well, I don't understand, Marilyn, though. Like, so you, if you're five years old and you're abandoned and you have no place to stay, doesn't yeah. social services automatically step in? Well, they released me to um, my adopted um sister remember i said my mother had adopted an older uh, girl yeah. yeah um and uh she was a um uh, a user a drug addict and oh, her God. boyfriend was a piece of shit i won't don't want to talk about him mm -hmm. um but i don't know as far as custody goes i mean i live so many different places i don't think i mean how do you regulate that like i can't imagine they kept having paperwork going back and forth to like legal i get it you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you were kind of lost in the system and yeah. moving around a lot. So you weren't necessarily on social workers radar. I right? don't think so. I think they probably signed me over to her. And then mm -hmm. I don't know if she had officially had custody of me because when I was ad actually adopted, when I was nine, we had to hunt down Herman, who I don't, didn't know, never met. He was my legal father. He was on my birth certificate. So we had to hunt down this guy oh. that was a TV repairman, this old mm -hmm. guy. I didn't know him. He's at my quote father wow. on my birth certificate. So I just remember going in and um and I'm like, hi, he's working on a TV and this oh kind of dusty. Yeah. Talk and about this, awkward. Yeah. I'm like, um, can hey. you sign my adoption papers? I mean, my, my adopted mother was with me, but it was like, I just remember him signing it and looking at me and saying, Good luck. He wouldn't even I consider taking you in. He's your own fucking father. Well, he was, no, I didn't know him. It was, he wasn't my father. He was my mother's husband. He wasn't Bob, the alcoholic. He was, Herman father. was not your biological father. No, was Bob your, was. Okay. Bob was I there at the it. fire that night. I had never met Herman. Okay, Herman yeah. was left. Remember my mother, 
I know it's so, it's so crazy, Doug. Like it's so, that's why I don't like tell people because it's like, I need to draw pictures and maps and family trees. Yes. You got to have a diagram. I'm following it though. I'm following it though. I mean, if anybody knows how to write a book, I don't, I, I, I don't know how to write a book, but I guess there are people that can help you out by the way with that. Mitch, (laughs) Mitch Brisker just finished a book and he, um, you can get help to do that, to help you. You don't have to, or you can throw it through chat GPT. Or I have a, I have a small fee, so just send it over to me. I'll write it for you. I don't know how to write either. I can crochet this stuff. Exactly. Oh, gonna smoke a cigarette and drive yeah. my husband nuts. Look at the rebel in Maryland. He said I could. God, I like he, well, it. you know, I told you he he got to go on a nice trip. Um, he just got back and uh and he knows that this is rough. So he's like, Yeah, just like I opened awesome. the window behind me. So he said I could you got a good hubby, man. Yeah, yeah, he's a good one. Um I've been through a lot. <laughs> I bet. So are you able, by the way, to, you know, talk this over with him or do you keep it private? Oh no, he's really um he's very open. Like we we talk about everything. He's actually been on my channel. They I think really? my viewers like him better. Yeah. He's like very smart. He's got like, they the, like him better. They do. Cause he's very like smart and he's, you know, kind of man's man. Like he, he hikes mountains and chops wood, and, but he's very like, he's got a professor look. He's got like the beard and oh, you nice. know, the bald head and he's older than me. He's 12 years older, but yeah, he's just a good guy. Just really, really sweet. That's he's awesome. a sweetheart. I got lucky. Yeah. So after <laughs> you show up with the trash bag, um, at this yeah. new place, mm-hmm. what's, what's your first memory? Do you remember going in there? Do you remember meeting who is going to now, um, take care of you? Do you remember seeing all the other kids? Was it noisy? Was it rambunctious? What was the vibe when you walked in that door? Yeah, it was. Uh, so there were two little girls, two and four year old. They're really, really cute. Um, a boy my age and then a bunch of older boys and then an even older girl. So there were 10 of us all together. 10. Uh, 10 in a in big a house. house or a small house? Two yeah, story? No, it was a pretty big house. It was, um, it was a big, long, like, uh, what do you call it? like a ranch? But then there was like a little apartment over the garage, two car garage where most of the boys oh, cool. stayed. But this was before, um, you know, like now when you're a foster kid, you can't share a room or all that with anybody that's not like your blood relative. Really? But we were all piled in, you know, it was just a lot. So many of us. It was and like we the would... Sea Org before the Sea Org, you know, you were <laughs> right? all piled in beds and living communal living basically. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was used to, you know, I had, I had been exposed to a lot. I had, um, you know, I knew like a lot of stuff I shouldn't know. And, um, I knew a lot of like quote worldly stuff that I find out later that's supposedly evil. So, um, I was, you know, I had grown up pretty fast and I was only, I was, you know, almost nine, I was eight and a half, but, um, I wasn't officially adopted until I was nine, but that was quick to be adopted, you know? And um, it was like a whirlwind, Doug, because all of a sudden you're thrown in with all these kids. You kind of feel like a number because you're having to conform. And there, I mean, there were some really fun things about it. Like my adopted dad was great. He would, um, he, you know, he was like the salt of the earth kind of guy. He'd take us camping, fishing. We'd go to amusement parks. Oh, Marlene's, you know? Yeah. <laughs> These guys are um, trying to get us hammered, Marilyn. I know, and, really. And, this, and if you want us to end the stream, there's a gentle way to ask us, guys, rather mm-hmm. than having us flop over on our computers. This gentleman was good then, the man that you met. It's the it's the wife that was going to lead you into the freaky shit. So yeah, to speak. she um she could be really nice. There, you know, I have this really weird pattern in my life. I guess is that. <laughs> these older women that have like two personalities. <laughs> And um, I guess I always uh, wanted to feel nurtured. I always wanted a mom, you know. And uh, who the hell? Sorry, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm gonna it's get okay. fucking emotional it's about okay. this. But, um, I always envied people that had a, a live mom, because even if you don't see her, you know where you came from. You can look. You can point to her and say, "That's where I came from. I came from that uterus," you know. So I yeah. never had that. <laughs> so it was really weird to not have that. And, um, I always wanted to feel nurtured. Right. And my mom had so many kids, you know, um, she had a history of severe mental illness. So I don't know why she was given seven foster kids. She had a total of 21 kids in her home. Um, and I say her home because my dad went along with it and he loved us. Um, I only ever really felt 
uh, unconditional love from him, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, yeah, so it was, it was wild because we'd pile in a van and go to church and we'll, we'll talk about the church thing. But one thing I wanted to bring up, um, and I'm just telling you my story. I'm not giving you an opinion about adoption in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's wonderful. There's so many kids that need to be adopted. There's so many puppies and kitties that need to be adopted, you know, yeah. and adoption is wonderful, but, um, it doesn't mean that just because you're adopted that you need to, to be grateful and take abuse and, and, and just be like, well, you could be back out on the street. I heard that so many times you could be back on couches. You could be back. Um, and one time we almost were because someone broke something in the house and they believed in corporal punishment. Um, they believed in hitting you, my mother mostly. Um, but um, somebody broke a vacuum cleaner or something and I know who fucking did it. And um, Not you. No, I was. Of course was, not. Yeah. I'm just joking. I'm just saying I didn't. I didn't do it. Um, there were you. You know, rough housing and it was. Um, yeah. And. I won't say his name, but I'll, yeah, he did it. And he was, he look, was I know there. it was you, Marilyn, just take there responsibility. Was <laughs> I'm getting a bit of a dirty needle here. <laughs> you know what? I don't have any TRs. I have tears, not Good. TRs. Good. I have tears, not TRs. Nobody needs TRs. <laughs> no. Tears are much um, better. Yeah. So it, it was like, if, if somebody doesn't confess, then uh, you're all going back into foster care. We're going to get rid of you. We we're already adopted. Not, well, three of us were. And it was like a threat. Like, you're, you're out of here. Um, and I was going to confess because I didn't want to go back on the, you know, on the street. But um, our oldest one, and I'm going to say his name, Franny. He's changed his name. Um, but his name was Fran. And uh, he confessed. And I know he didn't do it. To this day, he's oh, like, really? I didn't do what it. stand up guy. Yeah, he did it so that we wouldn't, so us younger kids wouldn't get sent away. He wanted the one that guy. did it get sent away because he was annoying. And there were a couple of boy, older boys that were really messed up that I had to defend. I had to defend myself against them. And uh, Fran, Fran really helped. If he was around, he would make sure they didn't do things to me. You so. were not messed with or any physical abuse um, or anything. Marilyn. It could have happened, but I, at that point, I was so I had already gone through so much abuse that I was like, "You're not gonna fucking touch me." So you, you know? would stand up for yourself already. Yeah, at this I point. was old enough. I was old enough to do, to to defend myself. Yeah. How old are we talking here? Um, I was probably eleven or twelve. That's and still so very very young. Yeah. But you have yeah. a lot of life experience under your belt. By the way, Marilyn, I thought it was just funny that if your if your mom and dad, if they had been um, animals, <laughs> they would have been considered fucking ordered twenty one kids. Right, right. <laughs> funny, Kimberly. But but you know, Doug, there were only ten at a okay, time. There 10. were twenty one. Yeah, only only ten. Where did I get the twenty one from? Did did you say twenty one? Yeah. Not um, there were some before me that went through the foster system and either Got went it. back to their, e it. either aged out or or went back to their own. Um, and ten at one time. That's still a yeah. shitload of kids. I think that that would still be considered a hoarder yeah. if those were animals. Yeah, yeah. And you know, keep in mind, I I showed up on their doorstep really Wait. needing like I was a mess. So just to be no nowadays, they would they would be like, she needs therapy. She needs you know she needs help. She ne she doesn't need to be thrown in with. 10 kids like a lot of times though they would somebody who was a trauma victim and plus having all kinds of you know abuse from my wolf child years i call them um i, like I showed up on my on their doorstep i was pulling out my hair my adopted mom used to laugh at me about it laugh now i know it's actually a medical condition yeah that people do that yeah. it's called tr tr trauma. something yeah, yeah it, it comes there's from a trauma. name for it. Somebody in the chat will know what the name for it. You but, know, Trinity, um, who I interviewed, Marilyn, I don't know if you remember Trinity, but she was talking yeah, about that was one Trinity. of the issues that they had. And the mother just totally ignored it. And that's a sign that your kid's having serious yeah, trauma, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, she laughed at it and, and I, simply didn't know that at the time or she was kind of evil? She would actually mock me about it. Really? Yeah. She Did didn't she... know what the condition. Okay. I don't know how you could miss that. No. I mean, obviously... And, you know, this is embarrassing, but I wet the bed too. That's what it's, it's another trauma response. Yeah. You know, so I was a mess and I needed, I don't remember in that church full of 
of Christian people. I don't remember ever having anybody like sit me down, even Christian counseling, which exists. But back then it was like, God will cover everything. God will really? heal everything. You know? Yeah. So, I understand that, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. But the church was crazy, crazy town. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we talk about the church, can I ask you how much the mom was indoctrinated into this and how much did she pass it on to the 10 kids? Was this something you were definitely going to be getting into? Or are we talking about like a casual church on Sunday type thing? Do you want to no. lead us into that? No, no. not a kid. Um, her uncle had founded the church. It was an Assemblies of God, which is one of the mainstream uh, Pentecostal denominations in uh, the United States and the world. There's something like... Uh, 3,000 churches, I think only in the United States, there's literally millions of members. Really? And uh, it's considered mainstream. In the 70s, the charismatic movement was really big with, you know, the classic gibberish speaking in tongues, the, um, the, the, well, I won't say fake healing, this, the healings, um, the casting out demons, like really getting, getting into music and, you know, the worship, the worship, like frenzies type stuff, like Hillsong now, you know, what Hillsong is the yes. Justin Bieber. Yeah. Yes. It was like that yes. but, but in the seventies. Right. So okay. it was, so not um, too bad then not you looking not, back, would you one charismatic leader? It wasn't, we weren't starved or anything, but mm. I'll tell you, it was really bad, Doug, because there was a huge dark side to it. There was that always that lingering thing. You're going to go to hell and you're mm -hmm. not. And I was at the age of accountability because once you're around nine, if you die, you're going to hell. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal That's savior so into your heart and be baptized and sin no more. So, um, I was always afraid that I was going to hell. And the rapture was another thing that was like, always be ready. Jesus yeah. is going to come like a thief in the night. And there's the verses in the Bible that says, um, like there will be two in a field and one will be taken up to heaven and one will stay behind. So I always thought I was going to be the one staying behind because I wasn't good enough. And they indoctrinated us big time because we were watching these movies that were um, called a thief in the night. Oh, it was God. before the left behind series where you like, I was scared because I'd be in a grocery store and I would lose track of my mom. You heard that um, story probably with Kelly that I told yeah. Kelly, I would be so scared. And, um, you know, I laugh about it now, but it's like the movies that we saw were so scary. I remember like staying up awake at night and worrying like um, if I didn't, if, if I missed the rapture and I didn't take the mark of the beast, because if you took the mark of the beast, definitely going to hell. How did you take the mark of the beast, by the way, Marilyn? What, what did that mean? Okay. So that, what that would mean is in the Bible, it says after the rapture um, that no one will be able to buy or sell. This is during the tribulation and revelations, right? Mm -hmm. No one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast, which means you're basically going to hell because you have 666 written on your forehead or on your, on your wrist or on your hand, your right hand or your forehead. If you don't have that, um, you will be martyred. You will get your head chopped off. And uh, it showed it, it, depicted it in the movies that we had really? to watch. And she was nine, purposely showing ago. those to you to scaring try you to. Straight. Yes. Scaring yeah. you straight. Yeah. Yep. As if that's ever worked on anybody. I know. I don't suppose you would, could I, use love uh, to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I told you about that. Well, the only way I got to listen to rock music was backwards because the, the backward masking and all the scary, you know. Yes. Could California. I, can I ask you, uh, well, so she would, how often would she play those backwards? What would she throw on Led Zeppelin and literally roll so the record backwards mother, while you guys are hanging out My mother wasn't house? really doing it. She would just send us to church and do it. She was always like um, more worried about like, she would let us like, I remember one time I roller skated down a mountain and split my leg open. I still have a pretty deep scar there. As long as you don't listen to rock music, you can basically, it doesn't matter. Like you could take risks and hurt yourself. Like she never worried about our physical body. Like didn't really like, you know, um, encourage us to take care of our physical, like, you know, reminded us to brush our teeth and just take care of yourself, right? Eat healthy, exercise, you know, none of that. It was more, she was so worried about um, keeping up the appearance that she had a holy family. Yeah, and so absolutely. she'd bring us to church. We went sometimes two or three hour services, three times a week. And I hated Sundays because we'd have to sit in the church service Sunday morning and then Sunday night. So burn our secular tapes. Yeah, we've done that. I burned my cult tapes too. So. 
I am what I am looking at her, Peggy. I'm trying to. He is. No, chat. he is. Thank I'm totally you, Peggy, paying attention to her. I can. He's I looking can at your, your chat too, so it's okay. Also, if I want to look, I can see Marilyn like the way I'm looking now. But if I look into the camera, I can't see my computer screen because it's down here. So I, it, I right. know it looks like I'm not actually looking at her, but I am. Peggy, yeah. to ethics, unacceptable. It's okay. <laughs> if that, if that's the most feisty thing anybody said, it's. it's all I know good. it's pretty. It's, it's a really <laughs> it's pretty awesome. chill. I've been I know. My I keep, eye out, I keep wanting way, to say hi to everybody. I love you guys. I know. Thank you. I know. Thank you for. You being can say here. hi to anybody that you see over here in the chat, uh, Marilyn. Tampa are, are you Man, able to Barb. Say? I mean, everybody. Joni Cummings. Uh, people I Philosophy. don't know. Philosophy. I love that. Tampa love B Man and the Hizzy. Kelly Copter <laughs> is asleep, so it's okay that she's not here. Joni, she how you doing? Me a couple hours ago and said she's unacceptable. Gonna- Unacceptable, Marilyn. She it's knew like you were four or on five in the morning. It's five Unacceptable. in the morning. Unacceptable. Witness, how you doing? She's doing the werewolf game again, guys. Tomorrow. I know. Oh, I'm glad you're you doing said it, that. right? Okay. Damn right. Are you are you going to be in it, or did you just skip out? I, I gave my spot to PTS Chef because I want to okay. be. In, I'm going to be in Streamyard. My job is when people die, I'm oh. going to drag them to the bottom of the screen because it got confusing last time. It did because but we she, didn't know who was dead or alive, and Kelly didn't know. I, I can't believe I I know stuff about StreamYard, but I just been fooling around in it. You can drag people to the bottom, so I'm gonna be the dead body dragger, and nice. uh, just help her in the chat. Um, she's got some little effects I think she's gonna have me do, so that'll oh, be fun. Cool. And, you know, I was like freaking out, like I told you, no TRs, right? So I was like, I can just I want to just watch. I just want to watch. I didn't know Thank what the hell everybody. we were getting Martha, into. Martha I Bay. Martha. I don't know a lot of these people, but oh, escaping the cultivars. Uh, Gabrielle, I'm doing a stream with her next week. Oh, nice. Yeah. And welcome yeah. back, Gabrielle, because I've noticed you've been, yeah. you've returned and you've done some interviews. Why am okay? There she is. Hey, Gabrielle. Oh. Hello. Hello. Man, it must be late where you, well, you're in this. I think she's in the same she's time zone. She's in Canada, isn't she? Isn't she? She's in the same time zone as me, though. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, so you're playing tomorrow? Sweet. Oh, She's playing nice. werewolves. Gabrielle, I'm already calling you out as one of the werewolves. I know it's you and apostate Alex. Those are the two I'm <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be eyeing tomorrow. If Poor you, Alex. I know. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're playing a game called Werewolves Part Two, Electric Boogaloo. Um, yeah. which is what Kelly titled it, which is hilarious. Um, and that'll be on her channel tomorrow. And I'll leave a link in the description box after this video publishes. Please join us. It's a hell of a lot of fun. And also yeah. it's been it's been really nice, Marilyn, not to talk about trauma all the time and just to hang out and, and Yeah, have fun. totally. Cause I I meet so many friends and you know, I feel like you guys are a part of my life, <laughs> you know, yeah. parasocial, but still. Yeah, still. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. How about we take it up to we've already been going over for over an hour. What do you, mm-hmm. would you mind doing like another half hour, you know, sure. we'll, 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 cause this is perfect. We'll bring it up. We haven't even started the story when you even get into the cult yet, guys, right. I think we got the, the most sad part out. D- did we Marilyn? Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I have a picture of the faith healer. If you want to pull that up with yeah, uh, the church. Good call. Good and call. I actually took a picture of the church yesterday and it still looks the same as it did 40 years ago, which is wild. The same? I thought that, so this is the church that you- This is the one I grew up in. It's about 20 minutes away from me. I haven't, Mm -hmm. I haven't been down that street in decades and it looks the same as it did 40 years ago. Yeah. And then there's like a parking lot that's all um, kind of, yeah, sectioned off. It's, I couldn't even drive in there. So I was uh, circling the, I had to, I had to go actually back that far in order to take a picture of the whole back of the building. So this is the be- so this is the front right here that we just saw right here. But that, the yeah, that's the front. That's the that's, that's the right sanctuary. Here. Yeah, that's where people would gather. It looks and so then, beautiful and inviting, and simultaneously a little bit creepy. If you don't mind me, say Marilyn. I mean, there's something so beautiful and ominous about that. Does it bring back memories? This this is the church that you were in when you were. Well, you'll tell us about it in a second. But yeah. this is what your mom was into and. Yes. And bringing you down on uh, more than just church on Sunday. 
Yeah. And the, the whole back, um, the parking lot part. Yeah. That whole back, those were all classrooms. And then underneath oh, wow. where those little rooms are, or the little windows are, that was like, they called it a fellowship hall, which was like a basement. And it was like a big banquet room. And, okay. you know, we'd have, we, we had some fun times. We had, you know, youth group and, um, you know, we had Sunday school, which is, could be boring, but I just yeah. remember sitting in long, long sermons. Um, the, the crazy, uh, We'd have these visiting preachers that would work people up into a frenzy. It was scary. It was scary sometimes because you had people frothing at the mouth, getting really? demons cast out of them. Um, the whole thing about like they couldn't even have a funeral without having like a, or even a wedding without having like an altar call and try to make people get, feel guilty that they're going to hell if they don't accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Um, and I really, never really understood that. Because you even would like then, have, even with all the indoctrination, you never fully bought into Jesus saves, and you were you didn't. I mean, I believed it because that's what I was taught, but I never felt like it was real to me because I could. I I always felt like um, I hadn't gotten it yet. Like I'd I'd fake speaking in tongues because really you'd fake. Well, it. because yeah, because if you didn't, you were bad. So um, they'd say if you didn't speak in tongues, then the Holy Spirit wasn't in your heart because that was an outward manifestation, right? How would you know that that wouldn't be demons? You would think that speaking in tongues might be you're demonically possessed. So how would they separate the two? And why does speaking in tongues mean that you're connected to God, if you don't mind me asking? That is a really good question. <laughs> a really good question. Um, there's a there's a, a substitute. There's a Christian substitute or a demonic substitute for every. I will say a demonic, satanic substitute for everything that is good and pure and Christian, right? So you have the Holy Spirit, um, which is a uh, part of God, the Trinity, God, the Son, the Holy Spirit is one, right? Mm -hmm. And if you think of it, they always described it as like um, H2O. It's like, um, you know, or like water, right? You have um, like water is, uh, could be a solid, a liquid, and um, a gas, right? So like solid is Jesus was, you could touch him and he was real, right? Then there's the, uh, the, like, no, it was just, I don't know if it makes sense to me. Like the salt and like ice, and then the water would be like the whole, the father, and then the, the Holy Spirit would be like the gas spirit, right? So that's how they always, yeah, makes always described it. And um, then uh, the demon thing was like, there was, uh, they called it principalities and powers, mites and dominions and dark places. So you always had to worry mm -hmm. about demons lying to you, always had to worry about demons tempting you, the devil tempting you. But there's a, um, there's a, like a Christian equivalent to it. So the Holy Spirit would baptize you and you'd be speaking in tongues. Um, it's, a, you know, that could be another whole stream of uh, where I get the gist of what you're from, saying. All that. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, they took, basically one little excerpt of the Bible and made this into this. Now in the Bible, it was the speaking in tongues was actually literal tongues. It was literal languages that people could understand. And uh, the charismatic people just kind of turned it into gibberish. So you open your mouth and you're just like, oh, like I'm just getting the chills even doing it right now. Um, but you know, Nora, oh no, Nora does a great, Great speaking in tongues. He's just like, be healed. Really? And then he just, da -da 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 -da. Oh, I have seen that. It's fucking it's awesome. So yeah. Funny. Yes. Yeah. 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 Were you freaking out as a kid or did you yes. just like, were you like, everybody's crazy, so I better start just baking it? Yeah. Like, and, it sounds um, like a madhouse, Marilyn. Yeah. As a they child. would line you up. They would have you come to the front of the altar and have this, like, all this music and working into frenzy. Everybody would be dancing around, raising their hands, and they'd have you line up. And um, we had, and I have a picture of it. I remember this woman, she drove up or drove up. She rode up in a tour bus. Her name was Grace of Grace and Vessels. Her name is Grace James. She's in her 70s and still say the same message, still going 40 years later. I just looked her up, wow. up her Facebook page. So she pulled up with her ministry. She would sing a little, give a little message. And then she would, she would have people line up. There she is. And if you, I don't know if you can blow it up at all, but she's pointing see if i can blow it up. i remember her pointing at me i mean this what this is just looks from like her a face gun page. that she's got i mean not in her hand it looks like she's pointing at you like a, a gunshot 
Yeah, probably. Yeah, she's pointing. And uh, she'd be like, Spirit told me that um, you are going to be ever like um, you're going to be a prophetess or you're going to be you're going to be a singer. You're going to be a preacher. So it was always something like that. You know, you're going to have the gift of um, healing or 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 God told me that you have a headache or you have a whatever, you know, like who doesn't fucking have a headache? You know, <laughs> she's a she's a false. She's a fake healer, would you say? She's well, well, she had some people that she was healing that I didn't recognize and it was a small town. So maybe she uh, staged it. But this one of the scary things was that you would line up at the altar and she go around and kind of just gently push on your forehead. And if you're lucky, there was an usher to catch you behind you. If you were lucky? uh, I was lucky, but my friend wasn't. And there were con- there were some concussions that happened. Let's just say that. Wow. So sometimes there would actually not be people behind them to catch them. Yeah. The, there was no usher to catch them. So, yeah. Oh, and I remember gosh. somebody like thrashing on the ground and um, like frothing at the mouth. Oh, yeah. So this is her Facebook uh, page. September this is from September 15th. 15th, which is just what? A month ago? Yeah. And uh, guess what? Her message She's is still, still at the it? same. Her message is still the same. He's coming. He's coming. Any soon. day, Marilyn. Any day now, right? Stay ready. Stay ready, Doug, because the he's coming. Trick in the book, right? As soon as the date doesn't arrive, the cult leader just moves it 40, back. And it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Forty years later. Wow. I wonder if she has any original members, Marilyn, that are still hanging on forty years later uh, as the prophecy hasn't know. arrived yet. I don't know. I mean, she was travel. She was like a traveling um, oh, snake really? oil salesman. So she wasn't the minister. Our minister, um, he was a good guy. He was an Italian guy. His name was uh, Anthony Testacica. And uh, yeah, Anthony. Oh, Anthony Wait, Testacica. Hey. Yeah. Um, he passed away kind of young because he had uh, type one diabetes. When I met him, he was he was blind, um, completely blind, but. Yeah, he was he was a good guy. He's just you know family man. He tried you know, but um, this is uh, probably where you you may might want to leave off as far as um, I sure. perfect. Uh, well, yeah, I mean I can go into my teenage years. I ended up running away when I was sixteen, and uh, because I wanted to go to prom, I told you about that. So I just wasn't really buying all the stuff anymore. I just it wasn't working for me. I wanted to fit in. I was in high school. Um, I was going into my senior year, wasn't allowed to hang out with any of my friends or listen to rock music, nothing. So I just wanted to, I wanted to like be in plays. I like to sing and act and stuff a little bit, you know, nothing, nothing like you, but you know, just, to, I just wanted to fit in and have fun. And, uh, yeah. you know, so I ran away, ended up in foster care again. Um, I ended up in uh, a couple of weeks in a, one of those holding tanks for uh, troubled teens. I mean. I wasn't really doing anything like I wasn't breaking laws, but I was just, I wanted to go to prom. You wanted to have fun and be yeah, a normal be person. A they right. wouldn't let you go do that um, at this <sighs> Pentecostal house. Why was that? That was part of the religion that was frowned because, upon. So you weren't allowed to be because normal. you were because you were supposed to be in the world, but not of it. I, and that's, you know, it sounds a little bit like Jehovah's Witnesses, like those worldly people. Those were worldly people, but you had to sit in, in you had to sit in public school for seven hours a day, and make friends and not be able to hang out with them. Oh, thank you, Destiny. You're so sweet. I love you guys. I feel like I'm ignoring the chat. So usually, like it was I know, just but me. if I bring up the chat, apparently I, I get in trouble from the just, people for not looking at you, Marilyn. So what what is one to do? We are blessed to have. What's one to do? Family. Yeah. Well. Marlene Sweeney and Zenu. Exactly. Escaping just like the ideal orgs. Just like the ideal orgs. Yeah. It's so crazy how, and whether it's a destructive cult or even something, would you see on a lesser level with the Pentecostal yeah. and the Bible yeah. thumper? It's all about not yeah. having fun, not organically having the natural urges that you have, whether it's sexual, totally. wanting to go to the prom, just basic shit. And that represses yep. the crap out of people yep. and actually damages them. Doesn't bring them closer to God or their true self. No. 
No, and it really primed me for later on joining a cult because I was so exactly. afraid of going to hell. And I and I always felt like there, there was some purpose to my life. And this whole thing of like not being able to enjoy your life, not being able to exactly. live in the moment. It's all exactly. the be ready, you know. Um, you just said a- it, Marilyn. You can never live in the moment and just be no. yourself. You always have my, you're reminding me of growing up. I was always terrorized. My dad can read my mind. Something bad is going to happen. <laughs> And I was always envious of other kids that didn't have that terror. And it's yeah, like, I was afraid of everything. Yeah, me just too. Always me having everything. that foreboding. Yeah, it's no way foreboding, to live. Foreboding, exactly. Yeah, it's no way to live. And and this whole thing of like, you know, oh, you're just a thing, and or you're like this life means nothing. Yeah. That's why people unalive themselves. That's why you have suicide cults. Or, I don't know if I can say that, but you know, that's you why can say whatever you want on here. They I go to the, they go to their death because. What's this life? It's nothing. And you're being yeah. conditioned. You're being conditioned to not care about your family, your your physical being, your own life. Um, this world, this world is you it's a prison planet for you. It was a fallen nature for me because Adam ate the apple that Eve took. And I'm not trying to pick on the Bible. I'm just saying you take everything literally, mm-hmm. you know. Come on, you know, you can't take it all literally. It was a beautiful book. Lots of allegories. Lots um, of contradictions. Lots of contradictions and lots of fucked up shit with, you know, you, you don't, if your kid's rebellious, you don't throw stones at them and make them die, you know, or if someone's, um, you know, gay or trans or something, you don't kill them or say you're going to throw, you know, yeah. be thrown in the lake of fire. It's just, it, that's, that's it's not evil. a loving God. It's yeah. evil. Yeah. I think George Carlin says he loves you. But he wants but he to kill you. Money. Yeah. Well, but he needs money. That too. Of course, well, yeah, he's right? Like, well, it was like you're gonna burn forever and ever and ever and ever. But he loves you. But he loves and you. he needs money. <laughs> exactly. Carlin had a great way of taking the piss out of uh religion and every other subject that's Everything. controversial. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It just made so much sense. Yeah. So we bring that's actually a perfect place to end then. So you're around and then we'll take questions or whatever and hang yeah. out with you guys. Cause I mean, yeah. that was kind of intense. It's actually nice. It's just, thanks you for sharing. It's nice to, <laughs> to get through part one, you know, you did it, Marilyn, because it, it only, can, you, can make, I ask, you make it easy. I mean, I won't say easy. It never could be easy, but yeah, if I had to tell all this to you, I'm glad I, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> oh, thanks Marilyn. And we'll, um, cause I want to do your story justice and just go as slow as you want. And we haven't even gotten into, um, I'd say we're about a third of the way through, but, um, can I ask you one question? So you said it primed you for going into a cult, right? Um, what was it? Can you explain that a little bit more? I was just curious. What was like, can you, what, what do you mean by that? Because there, there were so many aspects of it. Um, there was the, uh, the, what I would call legalism, the, the laws, the rules and all of the having to conform, you know, Mm -hmm. um, the, the seeds of self-doubt were, were so sown so early, right. Of that's your sin nature. That's, you know, you being tempted, um, you are set apart, you're a chosen person. And also the appeal of, um, the Pentecostal strain of Christianity is, um, very into, and I could bring up Jim Jones, for example, Mm -hmm. very into the, um, the spiritual, supernatural, mystical end of it. Not unlike some of the occultic, you know, like we so said. That sounds familiar. Not, yeah. It was like a different name, same, same thing, right? So it was um you're you're chosen, um, you're anointed, you're special, you have a, a red phone to God, right? And it's almost like you're a Christian psychic. So I never felt like I had that, but I knew that I needed some type of connection to God in order, number one, to not go to hell. And when you've got someone telling a fire victim that you're going to burn forever and ever and ever, and I'm laying wow. awake at night. Sorry, wow. I'm getting emotional. Wow. Wow. Um, we're, you know, thinking about what it would feel like forever and ever and ever and it was completely lost on your mom and your dad of the trauma that that alone would bring to you there was no recognition of who. yeah and honestly even to this day um my adoptive family don't understand i was like i'm not bitter i love them i never mentioned their name i i really and and if you saw my um interview with kelly i never 
I never said anything bad about my parents, my mother, especially. Um, you don't hold anything against them, Marilyn. Do you honestly feel like they were decent, decent people as far as they could be? I think they meant well. My mom was, she's, she's ill. She still is. Um, I don't think she ever meant to hurt me, but just because I forgive her doesn't mean, um, it doesn't hurt. Doesn't mean I had to have to trust her or have her in my life necessarily. Doesn't mean I have to subject myself to those things or excuse it or be like, thanks for adopting me. Yeah. Thanks for adopting me, but no thanks for some of the shit I went through. Sorry. Um, yeah. And, and one of the things I wanted to bring up and I actually wrote a note because I thought it was so important is when I was actually adopted. Um, so my birth name was Marilyn Rose Briggs. Uh, Briggs was never my, um, any of my family because that was, that was my mother's husband, the guy who signed me away that I didn't know. That was his last name. And, uh, my real father's name I never had. So, uh, when I was adopted, they changed, um, my name, um, to Miller and, um, my middle name, they changed and my middle name was Rose. That was my mom's name. Really? And that always bothered me. They asked me if they could change my middle name to Anne, which was um, everybody's. And I'm doxing myself. You can look me up. You know what? I'm a, I'm, I am a open book, guys. So whatever, you know. But um, I always, that always bothered me because taking somebody's name away. And they said, they asked me if they could change my first name. I said, no, I want my first name because I was nine. I'm going to change my, all my, all my names, you know, at nine years old. Um, they took my mother's name away wow. and they asked me and I said, yes, cause I wanted to, cause everyone, all the other girls in the family had a middle name, Anne. So I agreed to it. Um, and I was sort of, part of me was a little bit mad at my mom for dying. Wasn't that silly? No, it's so, not. I understand. But I wish I had kept my name, my middle name. And then when I had my my girl, my baby girl, who's 25 now, uh, her middle name is Rose. <laughs> Good for you. It came full circle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's, that's you know, people man. people could talk about that, like, you know, whether you think it's right to change someone's name, especially when they're they're nine years old, you know. But uh, yeah, that was just something I, I did write down. And I wanted to bring that up because it is... Um, part of my story that was important to me. Marilyn, know? I must be dumb. Uh, pardon me. I'm blonde. Why did they want to change your name? Did this have to do with their religion at all? What was the, no. what, why no. did they want to even change um, it at nine? Because they want, I think is they, um, well, they said they wanted me to feel belong, like I belonged to have their last name and see, all the girls in the family, all the girls in the family had the middle name, Anne. And even when I had my daughter, they kind of, Little, little bit pressured me to give her the middle name Anne. I said no, it's going to be Rose, and I started to to rise up and say no, you know. But it took me many years to do that. Um, so that's the obvious answer. There's another answer that I think um, is that um, there's like a possession aspect about children, you know, um, good and bad. You know, you want to take ownership as far as like responsibility for your children, but you don't want them to be things. And there that that reads into that whole thing about the quiverful, you know. Yeah. We've heard of that with uh, the Duggars. Yeah. Just collect all these children. So because, you, it's so creepy, by the way, yeah, those people. Yeah, because it's a it's a uh uh you know, quiverful, right? It's an arrow in your quiver, it's a uh feather in your cap, it's a crown in your in your in your it's just an object or it's, it's a jewel in your crown right You're, it's a thing right so yeah um yeah i think we're, they're looked on as possessions and that's why i asked you the other night about scientologists if they uh, ever really are big on charity i know they're not big on charity but um collecting you know foster kids and make them look good in the christian circles um, I'm not saying, you know, they were, had pure motives in some ways, but also it does make you look like a good Christian person. Totally understand. I guess I don't, Scientology has a version of everything about looking good. It's all about the outer persona. In fact, you know, there's a degree of that, that I can relate to in what you just said about my family. I was kind of a possession and it's that we have to put on the perfect family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's not, um, yeah, it's just so, it's so bizarre. It's like these are your own flesh and blood and you're treating them like a freaking object. 
I never under I never understood. Yeah. My my parents, <laughs> or parents yeah. that do that in general. Oh, yeah. quiverful, yes. Quiverful, yeah. Someone wanted to know Marilyn. Did they do blanket training? Um, in my cult, yes. Um, I actually have the book right here. In your cult. In the cult. This we'll get into that next time. This is the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was in that was in the uh, shiny happy people. They've since changed the cover. This is the original cover. Um, you got. I did a little review on it. If you go on my channel, on the first page is like uh, actual um, videos, and there's one that says um, I, I can't remember. It's like the the monsters of discipline, and I go through this book and do a little review on it. I personally it. didn't end up doing the blanket training because I fought against it. I was so happy to have children. I loved my children. I did do some corporal punishment, which I regret now, but um, I couldn't do it. And that's why I was always getting in trouble. That's what I was going to ask you to end off. This rebellious spirit, that's part of also what probably led you to the cult, rebelling against your family. Did you get discipline? Were you standing out with the other 10 children? Were you all, how did your rebellious nature play into how difficult your life was or wasn't when you were with this family before we get into the cult the next time? Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't really conform. I was always sneaking around, sneaking good cigarettes, you. sneaking a you know, drink or whatever. You seem so stuff. nice too, Marilyn. I can't actually picture you as the rebel type, but I know you are. You look so innocent. So the innocence must I'm have not, played into I'm your rebellion. I know you're not. Just because I like to crochet. I don't know what the hell that is. Like, But you just don't like, look like a rebel. And yet you are. I know you are. And that probably well, did that get story. you into a lot of I trouble. Mean, you know, I wouldn't have been able to survive, I guess, if I wasn't a little bit. No, you wouldn't have. You would have just gone under and, and you'd probably be a preacher nowadays. It's, I think, do you think that <laughs> that was a. I'd have a flower in my hair. Yeah. You'd be doing what that gal was that we showed earlier. You know, you'd be, you'd be her. Do you think it was that rebellious nature that caused you to um, ultimately be able to, you know, literally survive and get out of all these situations? Do you think that was the key? Because I know that was for me. Yeah, I think that um, my, uh, as, as Stephen Haas, I would say your authentic self was, right. um, it was stuffed down for so long, but it was there. And it was just yes. this little fire in me that Marlene Sweeney, I like to say her name, any uh -huh. chance I get. <laughs> Let me throw it up. She we couldn't. Add, yeah. She couldn't snuff it out. Since you put that up there too, we'll have to add this guy in here for the final yeah. um, party game and here. And speaking of um, this guy, yeah, uh, I was called uh, corny many, many times, and I really am. I like. I like to have fun. So am I, I though. Like Nothing to, wrong yeah, with that. I like to say goofy things. I I am corny. I'm so corny. I don't have to talk to a corn. Just saying, um, but. Yeah, like I, I am exuberant, but I I don't know. It's like I feel things. I feel things. And if I'm if I'm happy, you know it. If I'm mad, you know it. If I'm sad, you know it. So that's just how I am. I'm always just like I put it out there, right? So good hey, for you. Good Cricket, for you. I love you, Cricket. I love you. I I watched every you. minute of that stream you did the other night. I learned so much. I had so much fun. What was it? Three hours? I, like I didn't want three to hours end. and fifteen minutes. Cricket has one hell of a voice too. That was a that was a great conversation. Oh my god! Yeah, gorgeous voice. Yeah, I can't believe that she's not professional. I know that's, she you know, missed her calling. That's me as know. we. That's a perfect place to end guys. Thank you so much for joining us, but we're going to hang out and just, you know, with you guys and roll through some comments, anything yeah, that you want to yeah, ask, absolutely. please throw some question marks up there. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to light up a smoke. <laughs> perfect. Um, I think we covered this guy, right? I mean, yeah, and, we're done. Yeah. Excellent. So, oh, this, I'm just going to pull up random shit. Nasty, how you doing? Do you know who Nasty Nathaniel is? I do know he's the he he does the um the audits the yeah the yeah, and first not amendment. to be confused with the Scientology audits. He, no, uh, first, first amendment, first amendment like he's basically I have a right to be here. No, I I love Nasty Nate. He probably has no idea who I am, but yeah, he's great. I bet you he I does. Know. It's good to see you, man. And thanks seriously, Nate. Thanks for all your work, man. I told you before in one of the streams I've been watching your videos while I was deprogramming and had absolutely no courage to do what uh, what you were doing at the time. So thank you for your service, sir. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you, Nate. All right. What we do we got you. here? There's people still awake. This is awesome. I know. This is I my was, favorite part is, is talking to people in the chat. I love it. I really me too. Love but it. I was so busy literally watching you, even though I got accused of not doing so, <laughs> that I actually wasn't able to freaking star too much. So if you guys have them now, so I don't have to backtrack, please, any questions or, or comments that you want? Oh, Steve so was hang telling on me. He's like, yeah. Duncan, are you okay with two smokes tonight? Because I said I would have one smoke. You He's and I fine. have both been chain smoking tonight, but you know, we deserve it. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it's heavy, heavy material you're covering. This is what you said at the beginning, Marilyn. Just someone to... asked me, yeah, someone asked me if I was from United Pentecostal, but it's Assemblies of God, which is a little bit bigger than United Pentecostal. I personally get so mixed up when it comes to all these various Christian denom denominations. Is the, yeah. how do you even begin? Uh, like that well, Assemblies you know, Mark, of God, that Mark means Tory could tell you. Mark uh, Tory could yes, tell you a lot of because we've done. But I can tell you about the Pentecostal. Um, well, do, we, we can. We can do all kinds of streams, you know, like anything. I, I do know can, a lot of uh, scripture. I know a lot of that stuff. If you're, cause I know that um, like Aaron will say sometimes like, I don't know anything about the Christian. Like he doesn't, he doesn't understand it. It, it really helped yeah. me to learn about Scientology because um, like mainstream Christianity is not a cult in my eyes, but it, it can be culty, especially when you're talking about anointings and, you know, Pentecostal, I think is culty. Sorry, guys, if you don't think so. That's oh, totally I, fine. I think most people would agree with you. The Pentecostal, yeah, is. It's not a full blown cult, but you'll, as you'll, you'll find I wasn't a full blown cult, like, like a, a scary, starving, controlling, oh. isolated. Yeah. <laughs> Not for 16 years too, right, Marilyn? I mean, that was a huge, years. huge part of your life. Yeah. I'm so yeah. happy you got out, by the way. Me you know, too. <laughs> 16 years, you know, you could have been in there for life. And again, it was that. I was, was in that... for 16 years and I've been out for 16 years. So Perfect. Can I ask you, being out, I've been out about the same time. I got out in 2008. When did you get out? Seven, 2007. Yeah. Okay. So here we are 16 years later, both of us. How do you feel about how much you've changed? How yeah. much of the programming? Um, what's do yeah. you feel healed, or is it? How do you, where are you at sixteen years it, later? It's a. I think it's it's a process. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to like say, oh, it's going to be the rest of my life because I feel so um, free. You know, I feel so free, but still, there's yeah. things that come up. There's things that trigger me. There's things that um, I realize because uh, I could still fall into a pattern. So um, and. And I think that the human spirit, the human mind has, it's amazing. Isn't the human brain and everything, like all of the systems in your body and everything. I don't know where it came from, you know, Neither, it's but, amazing, but it's though. just absolutely amazing it's how amazing. we can process trauma in, in little bits, you know, and there's something within me that's just like kind of protecting me. Like, okay, we're going to deal with this now. Okay. And, um, there's a situation that came up recently. I want to, don't want to get into it that um, kind of triggered me. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about things like my trauma responses, um, about uh, patterns of relationships I've had, about things that I've allowed um, and things that I've uh, maybe looked for in my life that I don't necessarily need, but like that mother thing. You know, never really felt like I had a mother. So I tend to look up to older women as if they're somehow better than me, you know, which I do. I do respect older people and don't get me wrong. But um, I think that um, I've maybe found it in, within myself. You know, I can I can mother myself. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I mother my children to death. <laughs> yeah. And you have great kids. And if it's any consolation, Marilyn. <laughs> It's definitely different, so don't take this the wrong way. But I haven't had a mother in my life forever, up until recently, and even then, here we are, fifteen years later, talking. So I do yeah. know what it's like. I feel yeah, like no, an I, alien to this world. And every time there's holidays, and I see yeah. people doing that stuff, I'm so used to not having any of that for so many years. Christmas, Halloween, it all passes by. Well, not tomorrow because not Halloween because we're going to do werewolves, uh, yes. electric yeah. boogaloo part two. Yeah, but I do know what it's like, um, yeah. and it sucks, man. But at the same time, it's made me uh, an individual and totally independent because I've always felt ostracized just from the family upbringing. So it's very yeah. strange. It's like I do wonder what it would have been like if I had a normal upbringing. But at the same time, since I don't know what that's like, and I desperately tried to get it, and it and it didn't happen, 
it's it's weird it's there's always a um as they would say not to re-stimulate you but what is it in this world but not of this world yeah. i feel yeah. constantly not dissociated but in a way looking from the outside in watching everybody i'm not really a part of it do you know what i mean yeah no i understand i understand what you're saying and that's that's from not having a family that i could fucking yeah. talk to and watching everybody yeah, else to have, have the fun. roots yeah. um yeah, yeah. And I, I think I've been able to find that in other ways that aren't so traditional, you know, Me even too. in this community, um, you Absolutely. find people that you trust and that you can talk to and you get this, these connections and it does suck. It's like, yeah, my mom physically passed away, but it, in some ways it seems even more hurtful to have somebody that is there, but not, you know, like your mom. She because did the best the she could. Indoctrination. I, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I don't hold it against her at all. I love Right, I, but I at the same parents. time, this fucking religion, well, it's not even a religion, this cult um, convinced her that she had to disconnect from you. And it's just so evil. And that's why we're all here, you yeah. know? Yeah. Because we we wanted to stop all the abuse. And it's just amazing to me that like it is, we talked about this the other day about things being so similar, some ways different because Scientology is so screwed up, but there are thousands of micro cults. And that's why I scream Marlene's name all the time because like, you're not going to get away with this woman. Good you for you. You're going to hide in Vermont five miles away. No, there's thousands, well, hundreds maybe of people that know your name now. And there's thousands like you. You know? And we are going to expose you, Marlene, Marlene and um, get trashed in your name on the next stream as well. So <laughs> absolutely. Do you, do, do you think there's any chance? I mean, she lives right down the street. We're talking about her cult leader, which we're going to get into part two, my friends. Do you think that she um, watches? I mean, she lives right down the street from your house. Does she not? I don't know. I haven't gotten any. Um, I haven't gotten any uh, feedback about that. I've had some some people. Um, one oh, just lovely. Uh, he's a man now. He was a boy, you know, when, when he was in the cult with me, but he was raised, uh, partially raised in the cult. He, um, came out as gay to his mom and she's still there. She still cleans their house and stuff. And she's still, she's still in the cult. Um, he was ostracized, told he was going to hell that he was, um, debased and, um, that he was perverted and all this. And, and he, he reached out to me just a few weeks ago and he found my channel and uh he's like no thank shit. you he's like thank you for confirming what i've known for years that this woman is a psycho you know that so, is awesome so you kind of got somebody out of the cult would you say or at least well are he, helping had him left. Here? he had left but he was like you know but he it, didn't it, know it necessarily isolated. yeah it, it kind of gave him because you know when you when you go through these things, sometimes you don't even have the language. You don't even know what happened to you. Exactly. You know? I didn't know what a cult was. I just thought it was and it, really watching the aftermath helped me understand. That so is many amazing, layers by the it. way. Could, could, could yeah, you explain that a little bit? Because I thought that was interesting because you know what did it for me, Marilyn, as I read a book by Steve Hassan called Combating yes. Cult Mind Control. And as you know, he talks yeah. about the moon cult, the moonies. Yeah. And he wasn't mentioning yeah. Scientology, yet everything he was saying was what Hubbard was doing. So totally. you had yeah. the same revelation about your cult, which you think would be so dissimilar. This proves that they all come from the same playbook and they yeah. use the same tool. So can you so talk a little layers. bit about when, when, when you came across <sighs> Leah's show and what the hell that was like? It must've been light bulb moments galore, right? Yeah. And I, I'd never, I knew Leo was really famous, but I never had watched King of Queens because I was fully in the cult in the nineties when she was on. Right. But she's actually my age. You know, we're both I'm almost 53 like her. And uh, I don't know. I just I always liked I just liked her. I just like she's my kind of girl, you know. <laughs> and uh, when I saw that she had the, I had seen her, the cover of I think it was People magazine. My mother-in-law had given me um, a subscription and I was like, this is interesting. What is the Scientology stuff? I had bought a copy of Dianetics when I was 18 no. and out of the house and I uh, just got in my own apartment. I'd been homeless and and uh, I bought it because I just thought the, the commercial was cool and I mm -hmm. wanted to do some self-help shit, but it didn't make any sense. I threw it away, whatever. Good, and good. so that's all I ever knew about that. But then um, when this came up with the aftermath, I was like, I remember seeing her on People Magazine. I'm like, I've got to know about this. This is interesting. So I started watching it. And from all of the stories and um, the narcissistic 
uh, abuse that they went through with Dave Miscavige, how he had this shiny outer, you know, like, oh, billions and billions and everything's great. And then all the sadistic shit that he would do, put people through just all this arbitrary, like gross things that he would just humiliate them. I went through that kind of stuff. And so that was one thing. Then um, so many parallels with even the doctrine or the dogma or whatever. Um, the body phaetons. Oh my God. Like I went crazy too. the upper levels with like Mary Khan talking about how they wouldn't even let her leave. It was like, I would get you know, just, I, we could do a whole stream on that, you know, parallels of that. Um, but I don't think that Leah and Mike realize how many people they've really helped that never even barely heard of Scientology, helped them realize that they had gone through what like Roberta Blevins, who has life after MLM. She talks about that in the documentary Lula Rich that she was like, just so burdened down by this that she was like, I want to get my, my aftermath fix. So she went and watched aftermath and she was like, I don't know what episode it was or whatever, but she screamed the same thing I did. Holy shit. I'm in a cult, you know? And I was like, really? I was in a cult. Yeah. So you it, didn't realize it before then you didn't have read, read no books. You didn't have any kind of form, form of reference for all those years until Leah's show came out. Well, yeah, I was out. I was out for 10 years and mm -hmm. I knew it was, I knew it was an abusive. I knew that I didn't want anything to do with it. I knew she was abusive. I still wasn't sure about like the, you know, God and all that, but I kind of put it aside because I tried going to another church that minister ended up, you know, being, uh, outed in shame. Like he had an, uh, an affair. He was a hypocrite, whatever. So I was like, I'm done with, I'm done with organized religion, but I, I never, I always thought of like cults as like, Jim Jones, Heaven's Gate, Waco, all that, right? But I knew that she had some culty overtones, but then when it, I always find it super bizarre. People in cults watch shows about other cults and criticize them, don't see it in their own lives, right? Yeah, because we did that, like, you know, uh, the Heaven's Gate thing happened when we, I think the the month or a couple of months before we got married and we were like, oh my God, that's crazy. They're in a cult. Yeah, that's you know? obviously a cult. And that we're in a cult. cult. <laughs> we were I know. Cult. That's what I, Marilyn, I mean, we had a science. We didn't, we thought other religions were faith-based and you guys are farting around, but we had oh, no, a science. No, there was no way no. we were in a cult. I knew we it. We had I, the truth. I know. We had the truth. See, that's the thing. Everybody thinks that they have the truth, right? Yeah. It's just what special. nerdy girl film says. Hi, Joan. One I thing, love you. I, I know. Love she's awesome. Film. She's coming on on Saturday, by the way. And we're no going to talk about her yes. experience in the Portland yeah. Org Celebrity Center. And she's very, she has some very interesting things she's, to say. She's awesome. And she's a natural. She's got to yeah. get her. I know she has a, I know she has a channel, but we yeah, got to, yeah, we got to draw her out. She's amazing. We got to put us all on together too, man. I think it would be a, it. an awesome session just to hang out with, um, well, yeah. you and the ladies, if you, me and the ladies, if you don't buy it, that would be yeah. awesome. <laughs> the ladies yeah. michelle too she's amazing too. i know i haven't seen her i think she's probably hitting the sack or whatever michelle come back oh if, she's if, probably if tired yeah yeah i don't blame her um yeah but you know what i hear the most Marilyn? and this is no offense to christians please it's not um hit but, me <laughs> but the thing that i've heard you would you consider yourself christian by the way before i ask or did you uh, i think i'm agnostic i think we both established we're agnostic right because it's like you know, I, I mean, now, now I can bring back a few things. Like I, I just threw the baby out with the bath, the bath water. Now it's like, I can hear yeah, scripture yeah. here and there and be like, count your blessings or, oh, that's not really in the scriptures, but you know, <laughs> things like God is love. I like that. I'll keep it. You know? That's good though. I liked what you said. I was talking with, um, Christian. you're not a practicing Christian, but you No, I don't go to church. I maybe believe in God. I think, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't want to th say anything offensive to you if you if you still held on to some of that or whatever or to any Christian. But the thing that I've heard the most, Marilyn, is exactly what Nerdy Girl Film says. They are watching me, some you know, um, person talking about all this gibberish and Jesus, thank and they're watching. They're going, Jesus, thank God that's not me or whatever. Not realizing that they then call me up or email me or whatever. And say, good job on getting out of Scientology. Now, when are you going to find Jesus? And it's totally lost right. on them. Yeah, that they see, might have something gonna, to evaluate yeah, themselves. Gonna, Does that rub yeah. you the wrong way too, like oh, me, man? Hell yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, Doug, I, 
it pisses me off. It really does. But I can kind of understand it too, because they think that, you know, Jesus said, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every exactly. living they have creature. To. They have to. You are compelled to. Me if too, you as a Scientologist too. You have to stand before God at the pearly gates and be judged yeah. for every thought, every action, every omission, everything you didn't do. You know, so if somebody is burning in hell because you didn't preach the gospel, it's your fault. So you have this compelling. Isn't yeah. that crazy though? Yes, you yeah. feel compelled. And just like I felt compelled to get people into Scientology because if they don't get rid of their reactive minds, we're all why screwed. Can't, why can't people just be happy and live? It's like this I know. Whole eye in the sky stuff. You're missing out on life, you know? Religion sucks. Uh, Marilyn, it does, man. It's like it, it, not necessarily a spiritual connection or God or whatever people make of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking <laughs> I'm about sorry. this. I can't look at the chat. They're they're just they're cracking me up. Like, cricket who do you says, want me to pull up here? I can pull them up. Chow Young Smut. She found Jesus. Oh, Chow. We had somebody find Jesus in the chat. Yes. Chow, would you like to come on? I can send you a link and you can make a testimony here on the live. <laughs> I found him last week. Jesus, I knew it. I knew he was behind the couch. I'm going to have to look there later tonight. Chow, you're so funny, man. I yeah, know. but that's the thing, right, Marilyn? Without all these rules on, and regulations. We'll be falling out of our chairs, just yes. saying. <laughs> and I'm not sure. Yeah. Chow's going to have to go a little easier on her liquor next time. I think she'd be, um, she'd be oh. tanked by now. No, I'm just kidding. We did a three hour <laughs> thing, man. So I didn't even warn her to, um, to pace herself. And by the end of the stream, we were both, uh, zonked that was such a fun fun live yeah it was great i, I love being in the chat your chat's so fun your yeah your people are really fun i don't even yeah. have a moderator marilyn and we haven't had any, know, uh, any bullshit happen yeah at all yeah i don't really i mean i have a lot of moderators like but they're they're just friends that have wrenches just in case they see a troll but i only ever tell them like i only ever line anybody up if it's like something like this where um i'm interviewing somebody i want to be able to like look them in the eye which you're not doing with me right now i know but, I'm um, in trouble i'm just for kidding it. i'm just teasing you but yeah um if i really want to somebody's pouring their heart out and i don't want to be like hey you know just like bumping people out but because I've had trolls. I don't know why. Maybe we can talk about this offline. Mm -hmm. I'm a fucking magnet for them, man. I don't understand. I can help you with that. You this can? is my opinion, but it's from, you know, interviewing that narcissistic psychopath. And oh, okay. it's something that I think is true. You seem like a very empathic person to me. And if you are, that means you have high emotion or you have, um, that's what a narcissist or these kind of people would be attracted to because the more fuel as HG calls it, the more you would have to give off as an empathic person. So he said, it's like, yeah, that a, dude scares me. He scares the yeah. shit out of me, but I'm you very, can learn from him. Yeah. These are the I'm kind of people that you might be attracting yeah. because of the very thing that you're just talking about. Wow. He basically so said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He sounds, he sounds like the opposite of it. Yeah, but he the is. thing that he said, Marilyn, that I think is absolutely spot on, I've seen it in my life or whatever. If you are empathic and you care, you have a tendency to project that onto other people thinking that they might be the same way. So you, you can be roped in by a narcissist or a psychopath much easier because you're going to be more forgiving. You're going to think it's your fault, yeah. which sets you up for a cult, by the way, because they get a lot of people in there that want to yeah. help, right? That's mm -hmm. the, the help thing. But he says that you're always going to have that as a problem. Because in his world, whether the narcissist is conscious of, of it or not, they see people like you, um, he used like spectrums of color where you literally can sense just by walking into a room who to target, who the empathic person is, who the normals are, and who the other psychopaths are. Again, most of it's you unconscious. Guard yourself against that. So I'm always going to have, have to problem. know about it so that you can tell them to go fuck themselves and you can also yeah, recognize see, it so you can do. fail. I I, it's the same, same thing I have the see, hardest time People doing. I really want to block off my channel because they just they won't leave me the fuck alone. But then it's like, I should just be able to rise above that and not have it bother it, me. I feel you though, Marilyn. I that's a that's the constant conundrum. And all he said was that the more you can learn about that and be aware of it, there is a way to fix it. As soon as you realize somebody like that is in your life, rather than negotiate with them for 20 years of your life, like I had to do with my family to try to fix them, right. to try to get them to see the light. If you can spot these kind of people, you get out and stay out. You simply don't have anything to do with them. And I can tell you when I finally started doing that, when I came across this guy's information, he pounded home that point. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a form of disconnection, which I, I, I always, you know, in Scientology, that's a bad thing. 
Right. But in the real world, it's about having boundaries. And I'm no professional at this. I talk with Kelly about this too, man, because, you know, I think she might be a magnet for these people too. But the basic <laughs> idea is that to know that about yourself and to know yeah. that you're always going to attract people like that and that it's okay to have boundaries and to not, um, once you do spot these people, to basically not give them the time of the day, a form of disconnection. Yeah. Again, I hate because to use I think that the word. The more but... you give them, it's like, it's like they just fucking push me to where see i have this thing where i have a certain threshold mm -hmm. and i don't like as i'm like the hulk you know you like you won't like me when i'm angry if you push me over the edge i will flip the fuck me out me too and that's yeah. why so i overreact like, on people just, when that happens i, I can't exactly stand when about. certain people will just bring you right to the edge and pull back and then bring it and then like what i hate too is when you know and, and marlene used to do this all the time Marlene is she would create the Same. injury. She would wound me and then be the one to give the band aid. problem reaction solution, create the problem, get the emotional reaction and then offer the solution. And by the way, Marilyn, you just described what cults do. That's exactly what they do. I didn't have problems. I didn't have a reactive mind. There was nothing for Scientology right. to fix. Yeah. They made the trauma, made the problems as then said, go into session. We have the solution and they fix the very problems that you give, give. So when I got out, not only did I have all the problems of childhood and um, f that I didn't handle by being a normal human, but I had to undo all the problems that were given to me by Scientology. They were never mine. There was never any problem yeah, to begin with. Yeah. It's just like you say, you know, the Christians, they say you're a born sinner where a guy I never met before I pop out of the womb, I'm already beholden to somebody. I'm already a piece of shit. And that sets you up for the very cycle you of, owe. well, let right. us give you the solution. And by right. the way, it's only going right. to cost you. Uh, yeah. Remember, he's you know he's this that and the other thing, but he loves you and he needs fucking money. Yeah, and it's you, the oldest scam in the book. Way, you think of it this way: it's like okay, there's um, somebody who um, is wants you to to love them, to worship them, right? Mm -hmm. To develop everything you have, you owe everything to them. If you um, think about anything else, anybody else, if you uh, try to have any, do anything that they don't want you to do, but they love you, but they're going to throw you in heaven and hell where you're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Now, what does that sound like to you? A narcissist. There you go. That's why I always thought God, God the God of the Bible, especially the Old Testament is a narcissist. A true God would never need the humans puny little bowing down to them all the rules and regulations i mean is god that insecure I mean, it's just so he needs money he needs and he money and he's it. a narcissist and he's very controlling oh <laughs> my god i'm just waiting for the lightning bolt hey it's coming any day don't you know <laughs> i mean this girl is going to deliver it i'm telling you if you just would have been in there for Stay another ready. 40 years you would have gotten graces well, graces that's what vessels. she looks like that's what she looked like then. She's had a lot of plastic look surgery. Like. She looks she like. She's beautiful. She has the look gorgeous. of a cult leader. I kind of worshipped her. Yeah. The flower in her hair. Charis was she charismatic? Was she oh, uh, totally. kind of hypnotic? She, I can send you videos that she did recently with her husband. Um, oh, really? Did... We'll play those some next. We'll play okay. those in the next stream. Yeah. I'd like to actually yeah. see see this gal in action. Yeah. She's got a lot of Botox in her lips. Hard for her to talk okay i shouldn't say that but any sorry. cult leader has to uh, look a certain <laughs> way hubbard no marlene used... didn't marlene looked up oh, sorry okay hubbard um could have used some botox and some fixing of the teeth i look like um a shiny a skinny, skinny little brick 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 brick. oh you look funny. like the hulk i kind of do it i guess that's very funny you do. i've never heard that before that's great that's so funny awesome. you know what i think this is awesome. a I think this is a good place to end off. We've been yeah. going for two hours. I never want to end off either because the chat's so cool, man. And it's I just know. so fun hanging like out. Friends. I don't want to actually go. She but... does look like Marie Osmond. I thought that too. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Marie. The cult leader. She wasn't Mormon. And just for the record, um, oh, right, I was child. never a Mormon. I was never a Mormon. I never met a Mormon. So yeah, I'm not a Mormon. Don't say it's a cult, Marilyn, because there's so many Mormon apologists, even Mormons that don't think that that one is a destructive cult, but I say absolutely it is. Well, that's that's fine, but there's a certain troll that uh, was uh, schooling me because I'm a Mormon and uh, that's what Mormons do, is what I do. Right, right, right. <laughs> Quantum entanglement. Is that Teal Swan? 
I mean, are you guys bagging on Teal Swan? Do you know who Teal Swan is? I Maryland? do. I watched that. What was that called? The Deep Deep End? Was, that was fucking good, man. That, that was, was good. Wild. I that love when the cult leader is such a narcissist that I they know. decide to go on live. Like, have you seen Lula Rich? Have you seen the one about the leggings? The cult. The, the, I don't think so. The two CEOs. Well, it's about leggings. So you're probably like, I'm not watching that. It's about clothes. But it was two, um, the two founders. They, they were like, because they just love the camera, right? So yeah. they're just such narcissists that they ended up making themselves look like assholes. It was hilarious. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Teal Swan is like the ultimate narcissist. Creepy. I mean, they definitely she's exposed got her. That. Yeah. She just well, she's, she, she, people would say she's beautiful. I don't. Yeah. I If somebody looks a certain way, but their eyes are dead and their personality isn't yeah. right. They're not attractive to me. So I don't find her attractive, but she uses her beauty and she uses this, as you know, Marilyn, it's that kind of psychopathy can create yeah. an energetic pull yeah. and charisma that you it might is, actually think they, the they're, plot, they're powerful yeah, people. Like the, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Mesmerizing. Hindsight She's is twenty twenty two, by the way, because all I can see all the signs now you know, why I was being pulled to, I mean, well, Hubbard definitely didn't have the looks thing going on. Well, no, Marlene didn't either. She looked like, okay, I'm going to say it. Cause I don't, I don't want, you know, uh, we'll end off with the on her looks, but she looked, she looks like a, a female version of Keith Raniere, <laughs> like the mouse, mostly brown just... hair, the glasses. Yeah. Dorky. Yeah. But she was smart and she, obviously she was smart. Right. But she was very studious wow. and um, we're going to, you know, yeah, we'll talk about that next time. But we yeah, will, and that I'm not sure people are going to want to tune in if they're going to see a visual of a fucking female version of Keith Raniere. That's pretty <laughs> hideous, man. I mean, could you be and any we less charismatic than him? Could you be any less good looking? I mean, even the volleyball thing. Could you look any more like a space creep? She didn't do volleyball. She was. She's. She. Um, we were all fasting and wasting away and she was not, she was, she was sneaking food to her room and, you know, I can't pick on her looks because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty uh, chubby myself now, but I was, that's probably why I like food because of all the deprivation. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I, I feel you on that. You look beautiful, Marilyn. Stop, stop you. cutting yourself down, man. <laughs> um, damn it. What were we just talking about? About. Yeah, it's starting. To oh, I know. Up. We're all over the place. <laughs> it's been great, though. I, I know. Love it. Okay, we'll end off, guys. I hate to go, but um, I, I guess know. we're out of here. So much fun. We'll do a part two, like in a week. Um, yeah. does that sound good, Marilyn? We'll yeah. schedule it up, yeah. and then uh, awesome. we'll get yeah. into the really creepy shit, but the, yeah, the thanks, creepy everyone. cult shit. But I'm glad we got the heavy stuff out of the way because yeah. I was. I I just want to say, um, I had a couple of people, oh. not to put a plug in, but I had a couple of people ask um, about my channel. I'm so, so I, sorry. I I was, a, no, that's okay. Damn, I do I have a YouTube do, do channel. That. I see you. <laughs> I see you. I see you. Um, yeah, it's uh, the way you can remember it is, um, okay, so coffee first, right? You know, they always say coffee first. It's coffee, cults, and crafts. So coffee first, cult is in the middle, cult sandwich, and crafts because I, I crochet, as you see the yarn behind me. So it's coffee, cults, and crafts. And let me show something. I do have that in the description box. So let me show okay. people how they can easily find it here. I'm so sorry that, I mean, no, you, you obviously got me hammered tonight. I couldn't even be professional, <laughs> but let me show people where they can find it easily. It's all good. This has been great. I, sorry, yeah, it, I, I needed, I needed to have it be casual because it's been, you guys have all been awesome and fun. It's, it's fun as it could be. Yeah. So you guys can see, let's see. Okay. Sorry. So if you go into the description box of this video, it's already published. Damn it. I didn't even get the right one. Hang on. I wonder if I can go onto the one that we're on right now. I think so. Okay. Sorry. So if you, okay. So this is the video that we're on right now and it's already in the description box. If you'd like to find Marilyn and her foundation, so she helps out too, you just hit um, more so you can pull down the description box and here you go. Marilyn Honig's YouTube channel, Coffee, Cults, and Crafts, link right here. Marilyn's also the founder of a nonprofit, Berkshire Helping Hands, helping fire survivors, fire survivors and vulnerable members of the community. And there's a link right here. And then to follow her crafts and creations. She has an awesome, uh, really explosive. I mean, you got a lot of followers on that Facebook page, don't Facebook you, Marilyn? Facebook page, yeah. That's it where it all really kind fun. of started in many ways. And right? You don't have to do crafts. Yeah. It's the first, the first thing no, I did. No, you don't have to do crafts at yeah, all. It's no. just a great place to hang out at. Yeah. 
Okay, so you got all the information. Marilyn will link that information in her description box if you're on her channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because she puts out content all the time. And um, she's just a lovely lady. I'm so, just thanks for being in our community, man. We, you know, there must be something about the ex-Scientologist that attracts so many empathic good people because we have a whole slew. I mean, we're all nutters, Marilyn. You know, Scientologists have a lot to get over. We have a lot of narcissism and shit and we fight amongst each other but it's the it's the people around the community that are saying like you that come in here that help us out so i just really appreciate you being here i know many other people do too well thanks dog this has been awesome and i consider you a friend and i'm just right. honored to know you and like yeah i i just like your personality what you're doing thanks, uh, you too. yeah i just i just think it's uh it's awesome to have this this really cool chat is like kind of hanging out at night. I, I, like I it. love this. I, I love this. We'll, we'll do it late at night again. Um, totally. too, because yeah. you know, one of the things that I know we were both anticipating is just getting first past that first part. I really appreciate you being open and share, sharing Marilyn, but I was kind of walking on eggshells cause I don't want to accidentally ask you something. So it's good that we could just be more casual and the next one, yeah. um, we'll keep it the same way, but it's yeah. been really, really enlightening. Yeah, you did a- you did a good job. I felt comfortable. I mean, as, as comfortable as you can possibly feel, yeah. you know, I mean, you let me yeah. light up a cigarette. I had <laughs> your husband did your husband did that. You weren't supposed to yeah, smoke in the true. house, young that's lady, true. but, uh, you guys were really, really supportive and I, I really appreciate it. Um, you, you, you took care with it. It's, um, I think it's a good thing for people to know. You know Definitely. Like- Thanks for sharing. And we're, we're going to leave out, um, with this right? guys. Uh, we'll see you soon. And Marilyn will be back in a week to share the part where she actually gets into the call and the most important part, which she gets out. And maybe you can offer some tips too, to help people get out of a cult, Marilyn, because we've gone into depth in our conversation. So my friends have a good night and we'll see you soon. Good night, everybody.